I have been promising this stream in particular because the last one we did on conservative comedy did so well. Um, it was it was a really fun stream because I got to talk about comedy, which I have some experience in. I've I am a stand up comedian. I still do stand up comedy. Stand up comedy. It's something I have a lot of passion for. The hour is finally upon us, and I have not one, not two, not three, not four, but five. And I, I don't know if we're going to get through them all tonight, but I have five comedy specials. This isn't just watching one set or one routine like last time. I have five specials from such luminaries as, here's here's the rogues, rogues gallery we're running down. Dave Rubin, I actually had to pay for his, his stand-up special so I can watch it with you. Tyler Fisher, most recently featured as a character in Lady Ballers. Owen Benjamin, who, if you don't know, there is a crazy story behind Owen Benjamin basically trying to start his own, like, militia compound in Idaho. Um, he used to be a, like, pretty tight with Alex Jones back in the day. Uh, Michael Loftus, who's somebody I'm, I'm not, if we're gonna skip one tonight, it's gonna be Michael Loftus, because I really wanna end with Roseanne Barr's special for Fox Nation. I haven't seen any of them. I've, I've seen clips, assorted clips from some of them. them. If we don't stop these horrible communists, do you hear me? I'm asking you to hear me. Stalinist! Communists with a huge helping of Nazi fascists thrown in. Plus, one the caliphate. What the fuck? It's, li it's exactly what Ron Filipowski like, said it was. Every Christian democracy on earth now. Occupy. Do you know that? Occupy? She seems like actually. Uh, I'll go back to those last couple seconds. She seems actually like not. I mean. Like, I, I don't want to poke fun at anybody for having any kind of mental, like, instabilities or anything like that. I don't think that's what Roseanne is dealing with, but she seems like she might actually be inebriated here. That is so... I feel like that's going to set the tone for the evening, really, guys. I feel like that's going to be the... Uh how we're how we're all just going to be feeling by the end of it so this was dave so for people who don't know dave rubin which if you're if you're in this ecosystem of course you know dave rubin dave rubin is basically one of the biggest like lol cows in the right wing space i think even he's not like technically a lol cow in the way a lot of people think of him that's kind of how i think of him i just don't think anybody takes him seriously like he he is so low on the totem pole um, yet somehow he still has a platform. He's grifted his way to a, a position of somewhat vague prominence. Thank you for slapping a, a Ziller sticker for 25 bets, Juliana. Um, he used to be a comedian and, and there are, go watch actually, uh, Savvy Wright's books did a really good job on, um, a recent video on conservative comedians where she broke down some of his early acts and some of his improv stuff. What she didn't do was look at his special because he filmed one, I believe this was in 2018, uh, 2022, Jesus Christ. Why did I think 2018? That is so much more recent and much more sad that he is, that his tagline for this was make comedy funny again. Do we, uh, do we, do you think he's gonna make comedy funny again? I don't, I don't know. My hair is a mess today. Yay, Savvy. Yeah, B. Parker, uh, that's a very good, he is only slightly above my, bleh, bleh, bleh. he's only slightly above Milo and the embarrassing gay people the right has put on a pedestal for pick me shit, both because he is an ex-gay and he hasn't said what that creep said. Yeah, it's, uh, Milo is, is 
hard. Like Milo is up there with just like in general, just Ollie London. Like it's it's Milo as the absolute worst of the pile. Ollie London right underneath, and Dave Rubin's somewhere in the middle. Uh, like right between like Candace Owens. Dave Rubin sent it for four K. Oh no. Oh God. Alrighty. This is where we're starting off early. I want to get right into this because we got a lot to get through. This is Dave Rubin's big comedy special comeback. Don't say Dave. Great. I am very excited to be here in the free state of Florida, ladies and Jeez Louise. Okay, first, Super Chat's gonna get those out of the way. Sorry, I had to reassess everything because it has its own player that it uses. Gentlemen. <laughs> that is right. I am a Floridian now. I don't know if that's something to necessarily be proud As of. As you may have seen on the show the other day, I am a registered Republican in the free state of Florida and we have we have a lot to get to tonight. I am very excited. I know that when I come out here at first, some of you are kind of freaking out, right? Because I'm a real person and that's weird. That's weird. You usually see in me in a little box, you've got like 10 other tabs open, you're watching porn, it's a whole thing. But here I am and I need all your attention, okay? No clicking away, no pausing, all right? We can do it, I think we can do it. I, I'm seriously so excited. This is He is, somebody's already noted it. Why is he talking like he took a Quaalude? He is not, like even his stage is, well, I guess his stage is set up to kind of look like the Rubin Report, so that makes sense. But he is not, like his cadence is entirely different. I think he, he's like putting on this like very, uh, like, it's an affect. Also, his special is only 40 minutes, which is not very long for a stand-up special. Um, yeah, the, the way he's talking is so strange. Last show of the tour, and uh, I don't Hello. know if you heard. I don't know if you heard, but uh, Governor Ron DeSantis is backstage. Oh, that's embarrassing. He is wrestling a two-ton alligator back there right now. Is, is that something? I don't think that's something he's known for. Um, it's just like... So one of the things we talked about extensively on the last time we covered conservative comedy was how, and we, we talked about it with J.P. Sears, is how so many people especially in the conservative space, go to comedy to see not necessarily just jokes, like like not even jokes about, you know, everyday life or just regular boomer stuff about like, oh, I hate my wife and all that shit. They go to see specifically their political points validated, even if there's not a joke to be made. And I feel like we this is going to be a prime example of that because we're already seeing like the crowd cheering for not making necessarily a joke, just saying like, Ron DeSantis is back there. And like, that's that's enough to get uproarious applause. And I feel like that is is really setting the tone for what we're probably gonna see here. No, I'm just kidding. He's actually uh, kicking the shit out of a Mickey Mouse mascot back there. But... <laughs> Why is he glazing so hard? I we thought he was married. We should talk about <laughs> the, uh, the elephant in the room, obviously. Uh, and I'm talking, of course, about Disney's Dumbo, who came out as gay earlier today. The whole thing. Did you see the protesters out there? Did you see the protesters? Clearly the most ironic protesters in the history of protesting. They are out there chanting. I just saw my guys were videotaping it. We had, we had moles out there with, with the purple haired freaks. We had them out there. I said to my guys, mess up your hair, look greasy, and just go out there. See, again, like, so he's doing a setup for a joke by saying there's a new gay Dumbo, and there, even if there are protesters out there, like, you're giving away already too much of your ideological agenda to, 
like come at this in in a way that's funny for literally anybody who doesn't think just calling somebody a greasy look like literally a greasy purple haired freak is funny like if if you think anything above that level like it needs to be better than that to be funny he's already he's already failing at this point kai natalia uh has super chatted dollar 99 found you from savvy oh thank you very much i appreciate it so much i loved working with savvy and i think um I need to actually reach out to her because I think we may work on something uh, else soon. Boxing Cat, his pauses are so weird, like it's enough that it's noticeable. Yeah, it, so this is a thing that a lot of comedians do. And I'll probably talk about it a little bit more, but you get into a rhythm and a flow, especially, there's a difference when you're doing it at a show versus an open mic, but you, you a lot of people try and use open mics to get a feel for that rhythm. So you know when you're going to pause so the audience can laugh. Because the way jokes are constructed, you want to have a good punchline and then give it a break. However, what a lot of comedians do, and, and this it's, it's really hard for like professional comedians to come up with new material. Because even though they're already funny, and you, if you ever go to a live comedy show, um, you might get lucky and a comedian will be like, okay, hey, do you guys want to hear some new stuff? because they don't get a whole lot of opportunity to really test jokes out like people who go to open mics do. That's just the nature of, you know, being big. It's kind of like, you know, uh, uh, like a well-known band, the audience wants to hear them play the hits and then one or two off a new CD, but like, you know, keep it with the hits. So it, it's kind of a similar thing with comedians. And the thing is, is that most comedians, they, they have an innate knowledge. They learn where pauses should be taken but, and you, you, you'll see it all the time, doesn't matter if they're, they're big comedians or small comedians, but it's easier in a crowd like a comedy club. It is way easier for a comedian to tell a joke and everybody laughs because, and I talked about it last time, but most comedy clubs, they have drink limits, they have food limits, uh, they have a host and an opener. So by the time the main comedian comes up, 90% of the crowd are one to two drinks in They've been laughing for an hour. They are purposefully set up to have as good a time as possible with the main act. They don't, they don't need any lubrication to get them into the, into the goods. So it's, it's a lot easier for, like, like, sometimes you'll just laugh at something, and even if it's not funny, if you think about it later. This doesn't seem to be what's happening here. I don't know if he had an opener or anything, but people have noted it before. The rhythm is just off because I, I feel like part of the reason the rhythm is off is because he's like and I don't know if he's done these before in front of people if he's anticipating the wrong times to like break for applause um, but we will we'll see more as we keep going nobody cares does anyone care about the gay thing nobody cares nobody cares and then this don't say gay don't say gay, which of course it has nothing to do with not saying gay. You could have called it don't say straight. We don't want teachers talking to kids about sex, right? That's all that it is. And there really is no... Like, I'm struggling to think of anything that has had a set... We're, what, four minutes in? Struggling to think of anything that has had, like, set-up punchline construction. All he's really done is just punch down at people, like, for their appearance and calling them soy beta cucks so it's real impressive stuff um and he is talking you have to keep in in mind he is talking to an audience of floridians like he is talking to the people who live in the state where the don't say gay bill uh was enacted but he knows for a fact that like this is already disingenuous framing like you you can say straight you can have pictures of you with a straight partner you can't have pictures of you with a gay partner. That's that's the problem gay people have with it. That's the problem. That's why it's called don't say gay because those people feel, rightly so, and it's been proven, that they are not allowed to express themselves for just being who they are, even if it's something completely innocuous. Oh, I hate this guy, this little weasel. That's literally all that it is. It is obvious. It is something we all knew five years ago, but of course it's controversial in 2022. But then 
Governor Ron DeSantis decides to fight Disney, and what happens? What happens? Disney has lost $41 billion. $41 billion in about a month. Donald Duck is wandering the streets of Orlando sucking dick for a hot lunch. That, all right, so they showed a pan behind him um, when he first came out on stage. That was one of the first things I could say was actually a joke. It's very referential. Eh, it's not great. Like, there's no there's no setup. I think what he should have done is done a, gone with a pun. Um, but the laugh he got from that is not proportionate to the size of his audience. I just want to say that. That's that wait for applause I was I was talking about. Say it again, say it again. <laughs> I, said, I said to the governor right before I walked on stage, I said, you know, I might work blue. He said, you do what you gotta do. <laughs> do what you gotta do. But I gotta tell you, I am truly the happiest might Floridian. Work and blue. Like, you guys are happy. How many of you, Give any me new a Floridians break. here? Do we have any new Floridians? How many OG Floridians? Yeah. God bless you guys. Thank you for doing it right and letting us come here. We owe you. We owe you. We really owe you. I just love everything about this state. I got here on December 17th. These six months have been incredible. I love the gators. I love the peacocks. I love the snakes. I love the frozen iguanas when I got here. You guys know about the frozen iguanas? I got here in December and everybody's freaking out. Dave, you better watch out, it's cold. Well, cold to you people, it's 75. It's cold. Iguanas are freezing, they're falling out of the trees. Be getting put in a coma, Jesus. I just, I love it here. I really, I love it here. And Florida this man is did it right, right? Like, like Florida man was a joke, but you guys did it right. I, like I knew it would be Bad. Don't don't get me wrong. This fucking sucks, dude. Like this is like exceptionally. Somebody just said, uh, "Cali Kobold." So far, this is just an exceptionally boring rally. Exactly. Like this is just like this is bad. Like this is really really it's bad. Just so great, and there's just like so it, it, there's no another thing that most most professional comedians do. Dave, take notes. Is they want to have, and you'll notice this. Because comedians write jokes in sets, and that's so they can, uh, you know, if they want to tell, if they have a 10-minute set, chances are most professional comedians have three minutes from that set that at a moment's notice they can cut out so they can have a seven-minute set or just have that three-minute set and end with a joke, that they can make anybody laugh in a shorter period of time. That's, that's what you want to do as a comedian because you need to fit everything in, especially if you're still working as a host or as a feature. But what a lot of people try and do, especially when you're trying to do a special, is you you take time, you tell these these stories, like that storytelling is, is a big part of it. You have this time on stage to really get into the art and really bring people into the story that you're telling. And that's why all of the best legendary comedians are, at their core, they're storytellers. Like they, they bring you into what they're saying. George Carlin was really, really good at this. The thing is, is you want a little bit, just like, even just a little bit of cohesion. Like, you need a little bit of glue to tie everything together to go from one point to the next. And he just does not have any of that. So many good things happening in this country. That's the message of this book. That's the message of my show. No, Miley V, it doesn't seem like that at all. Happening. And it starts right here in Florida. But they say, as you guys know, that we are a polarized nation say we're polarized so i thought i'd do a little poll just to kind of gauge what's going on here in the crowd how many of you and you can applaud you can cheer as many of these as are applic applicable to you how many of you are conservatives how many of you are conservatives <laughs> 
Dude, if anybody in that crowd fucking says they're a liberal or a leftist, that is a fucking lie. Uh, the same old kid. Take my last five bits. I appreciate it. Thank you for giving your last five bits. Okay, conservatives, that basically means you have a job. So, good for you guys. You have a job and a family. You probably have a car and a dog. Good for you guys. Conservatives, that's what it means. You're wearing your underwear inside your pants. Good for you. Great, you're doing it right. How many libertarians do we have here? As if those are like... Okay. <laughs> He says conservative and libertarian as if those are like opposite ends of a spectrum. The Come on, Dave. Come the fuck on, dude. All right. Those are the people you can get the weed from after the show. Yeah, Black Mesa OST and Dre. He's re he really you is just like... True, and that's why you laugh. Like he's not just glazing DeSantis and DeSantis supporters. Many, he's uh, glazing out the audience. How many liberals do we have? Yeah, you're conservative. Enough of that bullshit, all right? All right, I was the guy. I did it. I did it. You're conservatives now. It's okay. It's okay. It's yeah. right. Salty Llama, wish I had the confidence to be the only act in a comedy show and not be funny. It, it takes a certain type. Right. It and takes a certain out. type. She's like, I can't be one. I can't. It's all right. They're okay. Look at these people. They're happy. <laughs> How many uh, progressives do we have here? <laughs> ah, damn, I really... DeSantis has so much security and I wanted to kick someone out. <laughs> Bad. They said I could use them for one thing and... Again, not that big of laughs. Another thing to note, his cameraman in the audience fucking sucks. But his whole point with this setup was like, oh, we're not, we're not that divided. And then he proceeds to just go and shit on... It, like, not surprisingly, but like, then what the fuck was the point of your setup? Saying like, oh, America's so polarized. What was the point of that? You were, you were going one way and then you completely abandoned that premise, dude. Like you gave up on the bit. But there are Annika, I thank you for resubbing. There really are. And it's like, man, we have been through two crazy years, but you guys lived right here in Florida. You really did. And it's in large part because of that guy, right? It really is. What is he saying? Oh my God. Acid drinker, when does he start the comedy part of the show? And I don't know. if you really know. think about it, like, look who we're up against. Look at this clown car of ridiculous people that we somehow started losing to, but not much longer. I mean, let's just go through the list. First off, there's Joe Biden. Yeah, you guys want to handle the jokes on him or should I do it? I mean, I mean, oh my God. I don't know, Dave, can you make a joke? This might be the place to start. God, he doesn't know what he's doing or where he is and he can't read and he walks like- He- He is going down- like, the stuff he's doing has no verve behind it. He seems like half of it is off the top of his head. Like, he has a vague outline of how he wants to handle something, but- and this is another big part that most comedians get down. You want a joke to be worded a very specific way. Like, it is, it is the way, and John Mulaney, this is a really great lesson that John Mulaney does it, because so many people, the reason John Mulaney and his specials are so quotable is not just because of the inflection that he gives to all of his jokes, but because of the very specific way he says them, that makes them easily memorable, very quotable, somewhat goofy sounding, but still distinctive. Dave is just like rambling through these talking points. He's like, like literally this joke with Biden is like, ah, he's so old, he's doing this. It almost sounds like a parody of what, like, mid-tier liberals would think conservative comedians do. And it's not, it's not wrong. It's not wrong at that. But it's still like, dude, pre like, it, it legitimately feels like he has not prepared. It's like Gabrielle. everyone sees it. It's like we all see it, but yeah, his really wants joke is literally Biden sucks. You know, the, please the love the me, conservative. Helicopter base. lands at the White House, and they just let him like free range through the grass, uh, just wandering around, and you know he has no idea where. See again, 
that that would have been a time to actually make more of an observational joke. He said they let him free range through the grass. Like you can turn that. It, it's all in the wording and the the inflection. Like free range through the grass is like yes, yeah, okay. Like that's that's fine. But through wording, you can say, and they've like Secret Service just lets him off the leash like an old dog, and they just let him free range through the grass like. He's gonna get put down, or like, like there's, there's something, you know, there that you can extrapolate into a better joke. I don't know what that would be, but like, the, he's just letting these premises. There are premises here, there are tags here he can make, but they're just like falling through his fingers. His jokes about Joe Biden are just punching down at him being old rather than criticizing his policies. Yeah, that's that's not surprising. That's that's what most, and and that's, I mean, you go for the thing, and this is this is always the thing with political comedy, even super broad stuff, even people who are like middle of the road, you go for the thing that is most recognizable. Like for a lot of people, it was Obama's voice. Like like not anything necessarily racial about him, just in general, the way that he talked. Like, like stuff like that. For Donald Trump, it was obviously the voice. It was the, the voice that, or like there was a lot of stuff to make fun of Trump for. Um, with W, Obviously, there was the, oh, God, what, we, we will not negotiate with the terrorists. You know, like, all of that kind of shit. Like, making fun of his dumb Texas accent and all that stuff. So, like, there's always something to make fun of. And Joe Biden's is that he's just, he's just old. He's just old. Um, yeah, fool me once. Sh shame on me. Fool, fool me twice. Don't get fooled again. Or whatever he said. That was so fucking stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, yeah. Oh, God. And the shoe. The shoe. Yeah. But, but like, it, it's stuff like that. It's stuff that's super broad, super well-known. Because, and here's, here's another thing you'll notice. And conservatives do this. And it's the same thing a lot of people do in my comment section. I've talked about it before. Where they reference something that is so specific only the in-group would know it. It's why broad comedians do those, like, riff on things that are well-known about the president, because if you're not just, like, addicted to politics, you probably won't, like, know anything else. But when you see people, like, in my comments or anywhere on the internet mentioning things that are, like, like I don't even know about, they're like, oh, well, what about this thing with Tom Hanks? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm not internet poisoned in the specific way you are. Like, what... What are you talking about? I feel like that's what he's really going for here. Crane was taken. Thank you for subbing with Prime. Strategery. We are one broken hip away from President Kamala. Oh, not a black I woman president. Heat coming at me. That was incredible. Yeah, we're one broken hip away from that. I mean, Kamala Harris, the woman polled at zero. Do you know that? She was... Caleb Morris, Trump is only three years younger, and yet, here's the thing. Joe Biden, I'm sorry about the, the noise, that's my dog. Um, Sean E.P., $20, goodness gracious. Dennis Miller's Raw Feed in 2003 was the first conservative comedy I saw after becoming a leftist. It's, it's a pro-war stand-up set, it's crazy. Oh, I bet. Oh, I bet. Yeah, Dennis Miller is a real POS. Um, Joe Biden is like an okay... 70 however old he is while trump is technically younger he looks so much worse like not necessarily in age but in condition you understand it's like like seeing an old car the car might have some rust it might you know the, the seats might be a little torn up that's joe biden like it, it's still perfectly drivable donald trump is like a car that is from technically three years older but has had panels replaced. It is like the they they did that shitty uh, base coat that a lot of cars do, where they put that black like spray paint looking stuff on, and then they never actually paint over it, uh, and that's just weathered away with time. Like he technically looks so much worse despite being younger. Polling at zero in her own party in the primaries when she. Why am I against AD Ukraine? I'm not against AD Ukraine. What? Who's, what, who's saying, where the hell did that come from? 
she dropped out and they picked her because she's a black woman. I didn't know Joe Biden was a biologist, but he figured it out. She is, what are you? Figured out she's a woman. And now she's the vice president. And I'm starting to think, do you think this is possible? What the fuck was that? All right, I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna stop. We, again, we have so much to go through. I'm not gonna stop on every joke. I'm not gonna stop on every joke. But like, what the hell, like, what was that joke? We figured out Kamala was a woman. I didn't know Joe Biden was a biologist. Is is the joke like is it a, a like a big Mike Michelle Obama thing that he's trying to do here? Running theory. All right, let's Kamala see. Harris. Scary pierogi. Let me see if I can do. Possible that her speechwriter is actually working for us. <laughs> it seems right, doesn't it? Because she can't be doing this shit on her own. Like these ridiculous. The speech is Russia is big and Ukraine is small. <laughs> the earth is round and it's floating and there's other. Of course, it's not just the two of them. It's the whole clown car of these people. We've got Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> is that, that's going to be like his whole set. For you guys. Jesus. People haven't been out in a while, so I just have to say names and you guys can boo at the appropriate people. Should we just do that? Although here in Florida, you guys have been out, so that's actually good. It's a little bit different. Yeah. Salty Lama, that doesn't surprise so me. Did, I'm on uh, about two months of touring right now, and it's been really, really incredible. I started in Florida in West Palm in Trump Country. Oh, Palm, Bird Dog, you're awesome. right. Yep, I forgot and about I've been that. Around the country for the last month and a half or two months. Again, again, the uh, Bird Dog talking about the um, uh, Katanji Brown Jackson. Uh, what what is a woman thing? That's something you only know if you're in this in group. It's not a broad joke. And when I went to the Blue Cities, I mean, the people there—it's like The Walking Dead. It really is. It's not like you guys. Look, everyone in this room, look at you. You're gorgeous. You're smiling. You're happy. God, he really, he just. You're functioning. It's incredible. You go out there and even my own. More crowd, fucking glazing and, and Krispy Kreme, like dude. They just got punched in the face. They all show up like, I can't believe there's other sane people here. But who else? We got Nancy Pelosi, which, Jesus, Nancy Pelosi, she is 162 years old. 162 years old. She looks like the Crypt Keeper, okay? She used to host a show on HBO on Friday night. Some of you may remember. She would tell these really bizarro stories. They let her out of the thing. You remember, you remember. Her eyebrows. That there is a doctor somewhere in San Francisco that she walks in there and she goes, I want my eyebrows higher. Uh, and he Crimson Sage, higher. drag shows are being banned and this is the replacement. Uh. And you know this one. You know this <laughs> she, I mean, the woman is running for re-election. You know about this? She is running for re-election. We played that video on my show, remember, where she's standing sort of at the edge of San Francisco at the hills, like the full house houses in the background. And what does she say? Why is she running? For the children. The children. We need more children. She's like Skeletor. She's freaking me out. It's freaking me out. But what I'm saying is, this is not the best of the best, right? And somehow, we let them run the show for the last couple of years. Or not we here. I keep, not you guys. You did it right. You did it right. Give yourselves one more round of applause for doing it right. God, the shaky cam has thrown me the fuck off. It, it seems like there's literally, saying, like, like shell-shocked Californian. Two oh, or God, three. No, no, I, I have to put money in the jar. Like, there's literally, the like, jar. this one right, camera you know, that's pointed at the stage, doing, and then one I in the crowd. I mentioned California on the show. As you guys know, I put money in this jar. But then a few weeks ago, someone pointed out to me, and I think this is the right thing. The idea was, I'm going to put all this money in a jar, and we'll get a couple thousand bucks at the end of the year, and then I'm going to save someone from California. I will give them a couple thousand bucks, and they can move to the free state of Florida. But then, somebody said to me, David, you're doing it all wrong. You're doing it all wrong. Why don't you fund all this money? Get a couple thousand bucks. All right, we have a setup for a joke. Are we going to stick the landing? I missed what you said. Sorry. Love the site you're using, Dave. It's incredibly effective. Somebody said to me, Dave, you're doing it all wrong. You're doing it all wrong. Why don't you fund all this money, get a couple thousand bucks, and send a Democrat out of Florida? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking Nikki Freed. I'm thinking Nikki Freed, right? Charlie Crist, what a clack. Can you imagine? Ugh. Oh, he's just the worst. These people, they're just so irrelevant. DeSantis is going to win like 90% of the vote. And then, yeah, yeah, it's fine. He's back there going, oh, shit. 90%, that's a lot, man. Yeah. No, <laughs> punk on a bike. He's always called himself a classic liberal, which is just a like another word for like a weaker. Every time I say Jen Saki. Ugh. A weaker version of a libertarian. Her. And the thing is, it's like, I don't like the feeling of like despising somebody. I don't. You guys know the way I do the show. I do this. I talk about politics because I want people to kind of get over it and figure out how to live their life freely and all of that stuff. And, you know, I toured with the great Jordan Peterson. Uh, yeah. The great toured with Jordan Peterson. Wow. Jordan Peterson, some of you know this, but Jordan Peterson, who literally only eats red meat. You know that? He only, 
The man has a bone-in ribeye for breakfast, a bone-in ribeye for lunch, and a Fred Flintstone-style tomahawk for dinner. Absolutely insane. However, however, I toured with Jordan Peterson. Of course, what is Jordan always talking about? Jordan's talking about truth, right? He's talking about order and chaos and the battle that we're constantly in. And that you should order to the world and you should be adding he, to the world. And Jen... He's like... He's not as, like, blatantly stupid as Joe Rogan, at least on the outside, but he has the exact same impressionability. Not, not the same, like, broad base, but the same thing in his brain that he, somebody will word something to him with a bunch of $10 words, and he'll go like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, which is how he fucking thinks Jordan Peterson has anything intelligent to say. Saki is the most dishonest. The woman, if you asked her what her favorite color was, she would say four. She is in... She is completely incapable of saying anything true. And the thing is, one of the things that Jordan talks about is that if you lie all the time... Some weird idiot. I think wearing, he's, right? he's pretty really disliked by most it, people because right? he's not that face, extreme, off, ultimately. He's always cocked like this, right? And her face is kind of like sliding off her skull. And I was watching her once, and I have a theory on why her head is always like this, right? And I think it's because the truth is so important. Again, he, he's making these jokes about somebody's appearance, which in comedy, that's fine. Fair game. But... The key to observational comedy is to make funny comparisons. Like, like it doesn't, not everything needs to be a, this is happening like this, or this happens, I say a pun, but you should say like, you know, you want to draw a comparison that creates a visual for the viewer that is sometimes more extreme. And that, that makes it a little bit more funny. Like, uh, when you're saying her, oh, her face is sliding off her skull, it's going to be like, her face is just kind of sliding off her skull like that one scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark or something. You know, like, again, not a great joke, but that's an example. And he's just letting all of these things fucking go. The truth is so important, and it's trying to get out of her. It is trying to come forth, and she's locking it in with her head. She is locking and it's going to come out the other way, and that's going to be... But now we have a black lesbian that replaced her. Got a black lesbian, pretty good. Do we have any black lesbians in the crowd? Woo! That was, you were wooing. You're not a black lesbian, sir. He identifies as a black lesbian. Like, see, see, that off the cuff remark about he identifies as a black lesbian got more clapping than anything he said so far. Oh, this is fucking, this is embarrassing. You're all I understand, lesbians. I understand why he put this behind a $10 paywall. This is. This is hard to watch. This is rough. Tonight. <laughs> People, are, you feel good. It feels good to say, I am a black lesbian. <laughs> I'm a black lesbian. Tea with goblins. Uh, you know a, thank you for the hundred biddies. The, <laughs> the black lesbian thing. Good God. Tea with goblins. Thank you for the hundred biddies. You are the best guide for this descent into conservative comedy hell, like a queer Virgil for a digital Dante's. Abandon all ye who enter the stream. Thank you so much, Tea with goblins. That's a line I've never said before. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't think you've said most of these before. T-shirts with me on stage right now. Now, in Joe Biden's serious? America, these things are like gold because nobody can get anything, right? You can't get a T-shirt, you can't get a car, can't get gas, can't get baby food, you can't get anything. So I have four T-shirts. We made these just for the tour. So I have two Ruben Report shirts. Like again, if he had a joke planned there, thank you very much for the pronoun sticker. Uh, if he had a joke there, that would have been something. Like you can't get you can't get gas you can't get what would conservatives complain about? You can't get you know no drag queens and teaching your first grader like something stupid. But he's just letting these opportunities go. It's so frustrating to watch. It's like it's like he's he's like the neo of dodging opportunities for jokes. Is, is basically what he's doing here. Like the jokes, the opportunities are coming at him rapid fire and he's just dodging out of the way, punching them out of the air. It's so infuriating to watch. And of course, because I know you people well, I have got two Let's Go Brandon shirts now. I literally, I cannot fucking believe he, put, he left this in the special him. that so he's making pay for, people pay for. I will these four shirts out throughout the course of the evening to the four most oppressed people in the crowd. Okay, so why don't we do one right now? It is anyone, yes sir, right here. You claimed you are oppressed, I saw you first, yes sir. What is your oppression? You have to think about it, okay. Yes ma'am, right there. Single mother raising two kids by herself, that's pretty good, yes ma'am, right there. With the glasses, yes you. 
Middle school teacher for 37 years. Middle school teacher for 37 years. Well, that is, that's incredibly depressing that somebody who teaches middle school would be here. Um, that's fucking sad. Also, like, again, this technically should be crowd work. Like, this should be perfect time. You, it's, it's comedy 101 is to ask, you You see this all the time, you see comedians practicing crowd work, even at open mics, just like, oh, hey, I'm gonna practice crowd work, hey, you what, do you, what do you do for a job? And then they try and riff on it. He's, it's just nothing. Oh. Let me tell you, sister, you got out right into- Here's the thing, I think this is the worst it could possibly get. Like, like for, and don't get me wrong, Owen Benjamin is gonna be some like borderline Nazi shit, if not outright Nazi shit, knowing him, so like, that will technically be worse in terms of content. This is going to be the worst, I can almost guarantee it, in terms of even attempting comedy. Time. You're retired? Yes, right over here, ma'am. She served in the United States Navy and she loves America. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. People are freaking out. You guys really want shirts. You want shirts. Let me get somebody back there. Yes, sir, right here in the white shirt. You're from Canada. You yeah, B. Parker, the exactly. You said, I'm from Canada, and you started walking to me. Like, I'm getting the freaking shirt. You get a shirt, my man. There you go. There you go. There you go. All right, everybody, calm down. There'll be more chances. I saw you. People want the shirt. They want the shirt. But these are the people we're fighting against. And man, it's like, what in the world happened over these last two years with all of this COVID craziness that fortunately here you guys didn't have to go through, right? It's like, even just in the last month and a half, like, the, we got masks off planes, right? Right? I mean... And what was it? It was one judge, a 35-year-old female, Trump-appointed judge, Judge Mazel. Everyone should know her name. She said, no more masks, and literally everybody ripped their mask off, and that's it. That's it. People aren't dropping dead. That's it. But you still see some people. Exactly. Anna Kai, exactly. Same exactly. energy as a college student realizing their paper is still tours, four pages short. All the touring guys, I was like, look, I am not going to do shows if they demand masks or vaccine mandates. I can't be fucked to care about but other people. I'm Dave Rubin. Every single one of you would have faked a vaccine passport to be here. Dave, do not give yourself that much you credit. Good, good masks, God. Though, Story sure Taylor, thank you for here. subscribing. When I lived in Cali, it was annoying to me, right? But now that I'm here and I see people with masks, I'm like, you know what? You should wear the mask. Have you thought about two masks? Because I've been hearing things, and uh, I was also told that uh, some saran wrap around the head would be pretty good. And, you know, if you really want to be safe, uh, of course, the uh, Ziploc bag over the head. Industrial strength tape, it'll take care of it. But it's all so the stupid. The joke is murder. So stupid. It was all made up between all of the inflation stuff. And Let's do war accents and now, Dave. You go first. To forget it, but I will not forget that little freak, Fauci. I will not forget him. Actually, I've got him on a cage right over there. We're going to bring him out. You can throw fruit at him. There you go. Wouldn't that be cathartic for everybody if I could just bring him out? You could throw some rotten tomatoes at him. God, it would feel good. But really, it was like the, the other part of This is, again, not a... Not a joke. Like, he's just literally saying, oh, that little freak Fauci, wouldn't it be fun if we brought him out and you could torture him? Like, there's there's a concept there, Dave, but you have to actually put in work to transform it into a joke. Of all of this just insanity. saying something like you dream. think Doesn't is the, the funny to imagine, like that dream. does not, again, it goes back to storytelling, that does not paint enough of a picture for the audience to follow you on that journey. Everything was so good, right? We don't even remember. There was no, except the fact that the Democrats decided to burn the cities. Beyond that, and it was only blue cities, they burned their own cities, right? So that's nice. That's why the hell I got out of there. But everything else was great, and they impeached him 17 times. Doesn't, no one even remembers what they impeached him for anymore, right? It's like nobody has a clue. They impeached him 17 times. It was like one time they impeached him because uh, he had two scoops of ice cream. Then they impeached him because he had steak with ketchup. Then there was the time he drank water with two hands. Remember that? That was a big one. That was pretty upsetting. Stelter was. This is fucking. Like, if you listen to this. This is getting no play. Let's go back and listen to that. Like he, these are joke, I guess, kind of jokes because he's he's, you know, just kind of rambling. But this is getting no laughs. This Pretty is upset. rough. Skelter listen, really listen. About that, that human potato. But Trump, man, it was good. It really was a good time. I uh, took me a long time to come around on the Trump thing. It really did because it wasn't until. It was really probably about a year left when I fully, I said, I'm going to vote for Donald J. Trump. And then, 
Thank you. That's nice because none of my other friends. Died Thank anymore. you, scented so, uh, trash bag. You guys know how it feels. But what happened was, I, what really was happening, I was working on it for a while. Like, Yento, I'm torturing myself. I paid to watch this. Beverly Hills, and it was the good funnest, god craziest, insane thing I had ever seen in my life. And I was kind of getting there. And then one day, it was actually in the middle of the actual impeachment. And remember what MSNBC and CNN and everybody some said weird idiot. Yeah, this is just our enemies are bad and dumb and laugh plays. Ounce showed up, <sighs> so I ended up basically opening for Trump. Pretty good, not bad, you know. That's all right. That's all right. I used to open up for loser comedians. And now, President of the United States, pretty good. So uh, after the after Trump gives his talk, uh, Don Jr. comes up to me. We become friends, and Don Jr. says, uh, "Hey, would you guys like to come to dinner with Kimberly and I to Mar a Lago tonight?" <laughs> it's literally just talking about my famous friends. Like this is something like, to go. like hack comedians who get two spots on Rogan and coast on it. This is something they do. It's like, oh, I was talking, I was talking to my friend Joe about this, and he was telling me about. This. It's like, what? To God. dinner at Mar a Lago tonight. But I think one of the things that kind of woke me up to all of this is, you know, if you listen to the media, and the media lies about. Yes, yeah, stunning sure endorsement. Just like with the governor in a few minutes, they lie about everything, and they lie about everyone, right? They lie about all these people that are now my friends, all these people that you watch. They lie. Ben Shapiro, he's a very scary guy, right? Ben Shapiro is very mean and very scary. Ben Shapiro. Pete, look, okay, people have said a lot of shit about Ben Shapiro. Most of it, eh. There are a lot of people who think he's like a, uh, like, New World Order, like, Jewish-controlled, like, anti-Semitic conspiracy theory type bullshit about him. That's obviously not true. But aside from the wacko Nazis who hate Ben Shapiro... Almost everything people say about him that's negative is true. However, nobody, there's not a child on the earth who's ever thought Ben Shapiro was scary or intimidating. That is the funniest joke Dave Rubin has made on here. That Ben Shapiro is scary and he didn't even do a good punchline. He's actually in my pocket right now. You guys want to see him? You want to see him? Facts don't care about your feelings. Well, but the okay, idea that like some of those again, protesters that's out there, not bad. Really triggered, triggered. I hate that word. They're triggered by Ben Shapiro, as if you're gonna walk out into a dark alley and there's Ben Shapiro. What's he gonna do? Like fire his yarmulke at you like a Chinese star? There's more where that came from. <laughs> again, these I actually feel guys. like fucking jokes. Glenn Beck, my buddy Glenn Beck, I love Glenn Beck. Ooh, that's Absolutely fucking embarrassing. Like I'll tell you something about Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck, that you may not know this. Glenn Beck has one of the most incredible memorabilia collections in the entire world. So some of you know this. He's just opened up this incredible museum where he has all of this incredible American history. Uh, and he has just so many awesome things. He has, I kid you not, uh, he has Darth Vader's original helmet from Star Wars 1977 before Disney took it. So you're allowed to applaud that if you want to. It's not a Disney thing. Glenn does not know this, however. Glenn was supposed to open for me in Dallas, and I was going to announce this on stage, but he got laryngitis. He couldn't do it. I was going to tell him. I was going to tell him that the first time that I went to the Blaze Studios in Dallas, I'm sitting in his office, and he's got uh, Astro right Core. When he said Chinese star, he meant like a shuriken, which is not Chinese. Uh, so it is racist, although accidentally racist, I would say, because he's just an idiot. There is a selfie of me wearing Darth Vader's helmet. In Glenn Beck's office. Again, these stories are just uh, like talking about his rich, famous friends. Which I will one day share with the world. So he has Glenn, but he has that. He has, uh, what else does he have? Oh, he has, I mean, this is actually incredible, truly incredible. He has the Olympic torch for, uh, that Jesse Owens held at the Olympics in Germany in front of Hitler. I mean, incredible, incredible stuff. Uh, he also has Dorothy's ruby red slippers. Why the fuck does Glenn Beck have all this shit? That's kind of the trick to his longevity. That's right. Glenn Beck. But people think he's scary, right? People think that Larry Elder is scary. Do you guys Again, think Larry Elder is thinks... scary? Larry Elder, who is... Nobody thinks Glenn Beck's fucking Colonel Sanders Mr. Rogers ass is scary. Get the fuck out of here. Have you seen Glenn Beck in the last 10 years? Get out of here. He's one of truly the most genuine, decent human beings ever who ran for governor of California. I campaigned with him. If this was a just world, he would be the governor of California instead of that American psycho that we got over there now. But I can tell none of you care. You're like, California, fuck that place. What are... Doesn't matter. Nobody cares. It's okay. Yeah, let him go. Let him go. That's all right. But Larry Elder, who the LA Times called. Uh, Ukrainian, I do not supremacy. know. I don't believe yeah, so. That's, that's what we're up against with these people. Uh, all right. I need to get some mods, so I, I think. Some t-shirts, people. I need t-shirts out quick, quick, because the yes, ma'am, right over there. What is your oppression? 
You're an ex-Californian. You're not oppressed. You're here in Florida. Who else? You. Uh, Neridian. Glenn Beck was a major conservative force in the mid mid 2000s to 2010s, where he basically tried to do what Daily Wire is doing now, where he tried to expand his what was a very popular radio show across film and books and all of these things. He started The Blaze. So if you know The Blaze, um, that's Glenn Beck. And he kind of petered out around the time of Trump's election because he did not back Trump as the the winning horse while everybody else rush limbaugh they all jumped on the trump train glenn basically up until the election was talking shit on trump for being uh, a fraud and a liar and a charlatan and when trump won he kind of had to eat crow and has been basically sulking and trying to get back into the mainstream conservatives good graces since then Yeah, Astro Court, that's, that's a good knockoff okay. Rush Limbaugh, go, Alex Jones years, hybrid. Okay, we got yeah. two more and then the governor's coming out, people. Who's oppressed? All right, somebody up there, we'll get it to you. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, somebody said Glenn Beck was a slightly funnier comedian than this for a short time. Glenn has, I listened to a lot of Glenn Beck when I was in high school, and he does have a better way, a far better way with words. He has, like, way more charisma. Um, and I feel like a lot of people have shared Glenn's stuff out of context, which is all fair and good, because he is very prone to doing kind of the Alex Jones thing where he, he talks about very serious things. He, he starts crying and starts getting very emotional on, on camera, uh, which, of course, he milks for, you know, uh, just attention. But he does have much more charisma and just like a, a better affect than Dave has ever had. Yes. You're a conservative working in big tech. Sweet Jesus, you get a shirt, we'll get it to you. Okay, one more, one more. Yes, right here. You were fired for refusing to wear a mask, you got a shirt, there you go. All right, and now. Man, this freaking flew by. You guys are awesome. You guys really are awesome. And now, ladies no, and gentlemen, Shawnee for the main event. Uh, are you ready YouTube, for the main event? YouTube are showing. Rabbit Fang, thank you very much for subbing. I moved to this great state six months ago, okay? And I gotta tell you, as I opened with, you guys have done it right. And it's, it's you, and it's you, and it's you, and it's you, and it's everyone in this room, and it's that Florida man knew something that the rest of us had forgotten, or maybe we never knew. And I promise you that I am here to keep Florida, Florida, and I'm also here to support this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Ron DeSantis, everybody. Governor Ron DeSantis! Couldn't get... Okay, here's what you do in that case, seeing as somebody who does video for a living now, and granted, I'm not even that good at it. I have audio problems all the fucking time, Easy fix for what the fuck your AV person decided to do here is just get the song, silence this, put in like some generic crowd noise or something. Because this is unlistenable. Listen to this shit. Really, really smooth camera work there. Let's let's see that one one more time. <laughs> Jesus. All right, let's watch two minutes of this because this is part of the special that I paid for and I'm only watching this once, so let's get my money's worth. It was actually kind of a brilliant marketing move that people paid for this. I want to see what people commented. What? Okay. I love that the Canadian got the first t-shirt. Funny that the oppression in Canada is only getting worse. What? Boxing cat slapped a sheep. Thank you very much. That's super cute. I like that. I didn't know they had seasonal stickers. <laughs> On RubenReport.com, we have. Hey, handsome. How are you doing today? It's nice me. It nice meeting you, and I would love to get to know you better. If you don't mind, I'm Sandra by name. Great website, Dave. This is on his website. I could love to get to know you more, if you don't mind. Yeah, I love, I love that, um... She says here her name is Sandra, but her username is Kelly and her at is Jessica. So that's the funniest fucking thing on. That's 
Yeah, Dave's got porn bots hitting on the lonely people. Wow. I am continuously stunned at how blindingly good-looking and ridiculously funny and insightful Dave Rubin is. I'm chronically heterosexual. No, you're not. No, you're not. Look, this is this is a classic case of you're just laughing because you want to fuck him. It, hey, look, it's happened to the best of us, but... Dave Rubin? Really? 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 We're gonna go right into the dark. Right into the, the, the heart of the beast. They, they're in a tent like a, a church revival. I will say, surprisingly, this already has way better production than Dave Rubin's thing, which is should not be happening. This literally looks like a church. Like, look at the, the instrument. Like, d is he a one-man show? Like, why, why have the instruments there unless they just didn't take him off for his special? That was very weird. Unbelievable. Oh my god. They told me I was canceled. Embarrassing way to start, first off. Um, also, if you're going to film a special, like, you can't. Look, look, I've seen a lot of comedians go on stage and a lot of shit. And a lot of times when comedians are just doing clubs or back-end clubs and they're not super thrilled with it, they'll kind of wear whatever. You know, they kind of just like, they get up there, they're up there for an hour, they're doing their thing. You don't necessarily need to be the most well-dressed. But this is not the the vibe. Like, I don't, I don't want to be too queer eye on this guy, but like, Dude, Sean EP, stop giving me so much. Need to go dream. Enjoy the comedy question mark. Comedy question mark is a great way to put it. Have a good night. You too, Sean. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Um, off to a swimming start. Yeah. Tent revival, but with Nazis. So a tent revival. Oh! Sorry. It's my dicing impression. People keep coming up to me and thanking me. All you guys keep thanking me. And I want to say this to all of you all at the same time. Thank you. I mean it. <clears throat> you have no idea what this means. Uh, not just to me, but my family and my friends and comedy itself, because <clears throat> they say they can cancel people, but they can't. You, they, they can not let you in their theater or their club or their- God, this is gonna be, this one's gonna be a rough one. I can tell this one's gonna be a rough one because of how much he's already preoccupied with cancellation and cancel culture. And I have seen, I talked about it on the last stream, I have seen so many, so many white comedians talk about cancel culture and it's so fucking annoying. It's never interesting. This is so epic. This is the best festival I've ever been to. And I'm like, yeah, cool. Yeah, thanks, man. He goes, it's because it, it's like everything's good. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like, he literally has At first when you weren't selling beer, I was like, this is going to suck. <laughs> but like, I feel really good now. I'm like, yeah, because you weren't poisoning yourself this time. He's like, I had so much fun last night and I remember all of it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's from not poisoning yourself. Literally, it's that simple. He's like, I keep eating the food here, and I feel really good after. I'm like, yeah, it's not poisoned food. It's really easy when you see the pattern here. <laughs> he's like, he's like, and everybody I meet is so nice and so warm and so, and so interesting. I'm like, yeah, I hang out with cool people. He's like, you can do that? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, the people that suck, you don't have to be around them. You can just ban them for life. You know, just... 999 from Media Breakdown. I've never heard of Owen Benjamin. How do you feel about Lewis Black? He's not conservative like at all, but I find it funny how he starts off every special trying to low in audience expectations. I need to watch more Lewis Black. I've always I've always liked what I've seen from him. I just I don't think I've ever seen like a full special, but I've always been drawn to and I, I used to like Ron White for the same reasons. I've always been drawn to like very cynical, dark humor that is not uh that is not like necessarily over the top as very like subdued and laid back like that's that's always been part like kind of my style not my style but like my style in in the things that i'm i'm drawn to 
Um, so I should, I need to check out more Lewis Black. Also, thank you very much for donating. And uh, I understand why people think I'm crazy, you know? Like uh, Coddington was talking about Joe Rogan saying I'm crazy, and I get it, because in the comedy world, I had status, and they were like, <clears throat> you know, you can get a million dollar Netflix special if you just don't say these three words. And I'm like, I just nailed all the words immediately. And they're like, why are you doing that? I'm like, because I'd rather perform in a hayfield for no money. <laughs> like, I swear to God. <clears throat> and be free, right? Be That's free. something that unifies all of us here. We just want to be honest. We just don't want to tell little lies. We want to be honest. What are the three words, Owen? Tell me the three words. Because it got to a point when it was just so crazy. They're like, because before I used to be kind of liberal. I was like, let anybody do what they want. You know, who am I to tell anybody what to do? And then... <laughs> That's kind of giving it away. I was liberal. I used to let just people want to let, let them live their lives. Let them live their lives. As opposed to now where I don't want them to. I want them to do what I think should be done. They start doing it to kids. And that's when I was like, no. And they're like, no, you got to go along with this. Uh, you know, they're, they're amputating kids. No, hang on, there's too many. There's, too many. there's like actually kids around here, right? I'm going to try and clean it up a little bit. All right, let's talk about something else. So... Love to see a guy talk about how uncancelable he is and how he'll say anything, even if it offends somebody, uh, just for him to be like, yeah, I'll, I'll clean this up for kids. <laughs> Alex the Lion, thank you very much again for the 245. Pride, A. Yeah, no, <laughs> P.O. Brando, they're grafting so the kids' limbs onto other kids. For our festivals and stuff was uh, Idaho and Missouri. And it's because I saw a pattern. I'm like, where are people not wearing masks? Where are there no rainbow flags? And where does everybody have a gun? <laughs> Yeah. And the thing that happens though. So, uh, the people who have the worst health, no style, and are the least safe. Sounds terrible. When everybody has a gun, is uh, your naughty dog you can't chase anymore. If I forgot to mention it, this guy is way more of a genuine piece of shit than Dave Rubin is. So, like, content warning applies for this one, for sure. Prosperous looking, you know. But I was fine. No, I'm happily married. I'm having a good time. That's, see, that is the thing Dave Rubin should have learned to do, is you want to describe things in a funny way. Saying that you're overweight by saying you're prosperous looking is actually kind of funny. Like, that's that's not bad. I'm healthy and all this stuff. But I knew I had to drop some pounds because I was in my pasture. And I was going out there with my Jersey cows. And I was wearing this, like, brown poofy jacket. <laughs> And I'm bending over to fix something, and my oh, thank you very much, 100 bucks. And sexually assaults me <laughs> because I had gotten so fat that my 1,500 pound cow was like, "I want a piece of that," and, and she did. It's weird. She thought I was like a lesbian cow, and I'm just fixing something. And I just hear boo, boo. So I started the Moo Too movement. That's a home run joke right there. That one's for Coddington. Nice little pun there, Moo Too. I don't like it. I don't like. And here's the thing. I like. Oh, oh, Marquise uh, decided. Don't don't worry. We'll get to transphobia. I'm sure. Um. Yeah. No. I got sexual assaulted by a cow. B. Parker. That's that's pretty much the joke. And then, as somebody else noted, uh, he went on to explain the joke, which is, look, if you gotta explain the joke, this is this is like the first thing you learn. If you gotta explain a joke. It's not good. Like, the, the point of a joke is that it should be constructed so that it leads the viewer or the audience on a journey. So that by the end, it... All right, so a good joke, the way that I try and write jokes, the way that a lot of people I know try and write jokes, is you picture it like a puzzle, right? And every word, every sentence that you construct around it is painting a picture for the viewer. And what you want a punchline to be is a final piece in the puzzle. So that when it snaps in, suddenly they know what they're looking at. Which is why a good punchline should always come at the end. You don't want to deliver a punchline and then have other things to set. This is this is why organizing, a lot of people don't think about this stuff in comedy, but this is why organizing how sentences are structured and editing your jokes to make the most of that is so important. It's why there are pause breaks for things. It's, it's also why you don't take time to explain the joke. Because the joke should speak for itself. You should, by the time you click that full picture in for somebody, they should be able to get it on their own. And, like, it's just fucking, man. <laughs> That's so stupid. 
So then I started dropping some weight, not too much, because I don't know if any of you guys have a, a wife that's even partially Latin, but if you get too thin, they like think you're up to something, you know? Like they need you to have a little belly on you or they think you're either gay or cheating. But I lost enough weight where my cows now think I'm a, I'm a skinny little bitch. <laughs> that makes me laugh. Like they get a- Yeah, no, uh, John Bainbridge, he went from their kids here to a sexual assault joke in two minutes. Yeah. About me walking in my field and my cows are like, he really let himself go. <laughs> You know, a lot of us came together. You know, a lot of people are like, so what are the bears? Like, are you all the same religion? I'm like, no. It's like, you're all the same race? I'm like, unfortunately not. I'm just, I'm just kidding, Boar Bear, I love you. Um, they're, like, <laughs> they're like, what is that? I'm like, I think we all figured out at some point in our life that something wasn't adding up and we had to do shit ourselves. That's what I- So I think the bears might be, he's talking about um, his like little uh, militia group thing that he tried to start. I think so, I think. Thing happened, and for a lot of you, it was COVID, because COVID happened. And it got so weird, like nothing made sense. Where they're like, okay, when you go into a restaurant, you have to wear a mask, and then we. Uh, here's the thing about COVID, and you're probably going to learn this because last time we watched a lot of specials that were spread out, like Stephen Crowder's jokes were from like a decade ago. Uh, Graham Linehan's jokes were fairly recent. These are all going to be relatively recent uh, specials, and what you're going to find out is that COVID was, and it was a bad thing for a lot of comedians because suddenly they didn't have, especially like stand-up and touring comedians, they had no audience. They had no way to tour, no way to make money. So it really sucked for a lot of people for a long time. However, COVID was also one of the best things to happen to come, not comedy, but to comedians because it gave them instantly recognizable big events that they can cash in on for years. Sit down, you get to take the mask. Yeah, John Baybridge, like and literally a cult leader. Like, so the virus just stays at like six foot, it doesn't go down. And Coddington's like, what about dwarves? <laughs> like, does a dwarf, like, so if your face here gets COVID, and, but you know, no, here you're safe, you know, when, when you're eating, but when you're walking in, you're not safe. Great, you want to mix up the joke for your special. Good job, dude. So is a dwarf always safe? So like when a dwarf walks his happy little ass into Arby's, like, does he have to wear a mask? And so a lot of people are like, this doesn't make sense. And uh, I've been like that my whole life. Uh, things have not been adding up to me with me forever. You know, anybody make some noise if that's you. Have you been seeing shit for, yeah. I wonder why things wouldn't add up to you. It, it couldn't possibly uh, because you're terrible at addition. You're probably not great at like the most basic math problems. He's like, oh, things just haven't made sense to me my whole life. It's like, that'll happen when you're dumb as shit. Sorry. Well, it really started when I was five. My, uh, my dad was a college <laughs> professor and he used to have all these like highfalutin people over and they talk about philosophy. And there's this one picture of a dude on an iceberg and it was uh, Sartre was his name. You know, this guy, he started existentialism. And I'm like five and I'm listening. Is he really gonna go on to, like, what is it about these guys that is like, they, they need to tell their audience how cool they are. The audience is, is trying to, is there to see you. Like you're, you're the attraction. You're what they ostensibly paid for. Like, why, why do you need to convince them of how cool you are that you, you knew philosophy, you knew Sartre at five? Like, get the fuck out of here. Them talk and they're like, oh yeah, it's like uh, existentialism, hell is other people. And he wrote this whole play about how hell is other people. And he was standing on this iceberg alone, you know? And it's this little kid, I just go, who took the picture? <laughs> this whole set is direct. <laughs> you know, Jessica Forlega, that's, that's a good one. Uh, Jessica Forlega said, what do you mean he's bad at math? He's doing calculus here because his whole set is derivative. That's good. He didn't take a selfie, like somebody took the picture and I was just talking a lot of shit. And they all laughed, like I made this funny joke and uh, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not joking. You know, my whole career could be summed up with, I'm not kidding, like I want answers. <laughs> and, then, and then I went into middle school and there was this map on the wall, social studies. And you know, you had North, North America, South America, Africa, Europe, and Greenland. You know, and Greenland's huge, it's just this massive place. And uh, we just kept learning about what was happening in this little area over in the Mediterranean, you know? And I just kept being like, yo, what's going on in Greenland? And my teacher's like, nothing, nothing at all. And I'm like, dude, it's like 10 times bigger than South America and it's green land and it's literally green. Like the color is green, it's enormous. Uh, so what's going on there? And they're like, it's not really green. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? And he's like, no, it's actually icy and it's not big. Seven. Are we really doing Greenland, Iceland jokes? Like, I, we, everybody made this joke 
in sixth grade when they looked at a world map and they're like, hey, why is the, wait, hey, what's the deal with uh, Greenland? Can you tell me? Why is, uh, oh, can I do a Jerry? I don't think I can do it here. Oh, uh, what's the deal with uh, Greenland? They say, they say it's green, but it's covered in ice. And then you've got Iceland, which is covered in green. Yeah, sorry, that was, that was, <laughs> Hank Boozy, th I, I've literally never done a, a Jerry Seinfeld voice, so that was, that was my best one. <laughs> I apologize to everybody for that. <laughs> Greenlands can fit in South America. I'm like, dude, that's way bigger. He's like, this map uh, is a lie. And then I start seeing it in words, like, think about how sadistic it was to put the letter S in the word lisp. <laughs> like, if you have a lisp, you can't tell anyone without lisping. This is, this is like, this is open mic fodder, is what this is. Like, this is open mic fodder. Woof. There's four total letters in this little word, and one of them is going to make you lisp. And so a dude's like, I have a lisp. And someone's like, what do you, what do you, I can't understand. Again, he's explaining the joke. Like, the joke isn't that great. It's, it's a very common, like, these, these observations are not unique which is why they're not like getting big laughs because they're most things that people go on their own. People will just be like, yeah, huh, that is weird. Uh, and then just forget about it. So the fact that he's like, oh, you ever think about this stuff? It's like, yeah, most people do. And then they just throw it out of their head because it's not that big of a, a thing. It's not that funny. Um, but the way that he's constructing the joke is that like alone, that should have been what he's extrapolating into multiple minutes should have been a throwaway tag. That should have been like, you ever think about how sadistic it is that the word lisp has an S in it? That got a laugh. And now he's continuing on to explain the joke. It's like, what the f I wonder why you didn't take off and stand up. I wonder. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, I have a lisp. I'm like, I don't know what you're saying, dude. <laughs> By the way, I haven't been on stage in four years, and I'm taping a special the first time I'm back. That's, that's so... <laughs> Dude, you said it, not me. You said it, not me. You want to call yourself that for taping a special for the first time in four years? I'm, I'm not going to stop you. Ba Bagel Goblin, thank you very much for following. Yeah, no, Epsilon, this is the, the same one he said. <laughs> Just think about that. Like I... <laughs> It's like, oh, you're going to work on your special? You're going to go to theaters and stuff? It's like, no, I got a field, but I got a guy who makes domes who drinks his own piss. <laughs> like, that's... Um, you can tell a lot about society by who they value. You know, like, in America right now, it's like, uh, sodomite. <laughs> I wasn't expecting... I'm sorry. I wasn't expecting sodomites to be part of this. I've, that's something I haven't heard since we were watching the, the hate preacher sermons. Like dude is literally talking about sodom. Oh man. Also very funny to think that, uh, that's what people in America I'm value. Talking about Sorry. Sodom oh man. Yeah, that's a little echo for you. Um, that is <laughs> Yeah, you could tell by how how uh much legislation is being passed against gay people, how much the the world really values sodomites, you dumb motherfucker. You should value some sodomites, then maybe your uh, clothes would fit, bitch. You know, it's like the month of June is if you're like total this is a little weird. Is there kids around that's too many kids for that one? No, tell it. Oh, I thought we were. Can't you know be. Can't be you know canceled. <laughs> it's super gross. Like, I, like I'm like in a joke. I just imagine an innocent child over there. Like, what do they do, Papa? I'm like, but just keep them away from that. Uh, but you, you get what I'm saying, though. Like, they'll have like a rainbow crosswalk where they they just roll out the red carpet for literally like the most disgusting people in the world. <laughs> And then people will say, I'll say stuff to this. I'll say, I speak my mind all the time. And I'll just say this and someone will be like, well, I'm gay. And I'm just like, ew, that's so gross. A lot of you guys need to learn this skill. Let me explain something to you. You don't need to react. Like if someone goes, 
that's homophobic. Oh, no, I'm not scared of them. I'm disgusted. <laughs> he, he is, you know? This is literally like hate church shit. This is literally hate church shit. They're like, my identity is based around something too despicable and disgusting for me to discuss right now in a tent. In Missouri, in a hayfield. Uh, well, that's... Is it, Owen? Because you just told a joke about yourself getting sexually assaulted by a cow. Is it? Is it really? Is, is a pride parade too disgusting to talk about in a tent? God, you dipshit. <laughs> I thought we weren't afraid of getting canceled. Yeah, and we're not alone, guys. Tons of people get this, but they just don't know this valuable thing that you don't have to backpedal. When they're like, I happen to be gay, I'm like, you happen to be the fuck out of here now. Get, get, why don't you, uh, why don't you pack up the rollerblades and go down to the bar where you belong? And they don't know what to do. It's so funny, like, track their programming. Because you're not even mad. They're like, no, but I just said I'm gay. And I'm like, I said get. I love, I love he's playing the tough guy, making up, like, a story that never happened. Like, shit that absolutely doesn't happen. Why don't you say what you would actually call a gay person, Owen? I, I know, I know that that slur is right on the tip of your tongue. Come on. Say it. Come on, say it. Say it. And then say that around actual gay people. You planet dwarfing pussy. You know, when the kids are like throwing stuff and they're like trying to grab her face and she just looks at you like, and you're just like, bed, you're done, stop, don't touch her like that. And you're like, we good? Can I sleep in the guest room again tonight? <laughs> you know, you gotta be able to lay it down because the more kids you have, the more aggressive you have to be. Not like mean or bad, but just like these super passive guys can't do it. They're like, well, I, I would yell, but that causes trauma. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, but he's like poking your wife in the ear. And that's so his reason for yelling at children who don't understand and are supposed to trust their uh, caretakers and parents and guardians is innocuous shit like a kid poking his mom in the ear, which, by the way, yelling at him will not, will not fix that. He still doesn't know why he's being yelled at. He just knows to fear you now. You stupid shithead. I hope all of your kids turn out to be gay or trans. That is what you deserve. You deserve to never speak to your children again and for them to hate your guts. That's why my kids are so well behaved. Like people think that it's a mystery. It's like, no, you gotta tell, you gotta protect the woman so that she can protect them. You know, that's the hierarchy of God, man, woman, child. It's fucking yeah. embarrassing, dude. Like little kids need their mom. You know, they need the dad to like keep everything safe, provide and just keep her going. Parking fucking walk. hysterical how he's gonna talk about how the rest of the world is anti-mother but he's going to talk about how, oh, women are just naturally set out to just do this thing. And they need big, strong men to tell them what to do and, and help them around. It's like, dude. And I never thought about this before I had kids, especially a woman with four kids. Is uh, like, we'll be at Home Depot and there's no parking spots. And all the, par the spots up front are empty, but they just have a little guy in a, in a wheelchair. You know? And the moms have to go all the way back to the parking lot. And they have to, like, their kids, they have to, like, carry kids. They have to, like, run and get a, a cart and put one in the cart and this cart and distract another with a snack. And, and they're, like, weaving through cars. Meanwhile, the cripples, they just roll up with their magic little van. They're, like, I'm here. And they just hit a button and it lowers them down. And they have their little throne. And they're, like, Nrr. And most of them, I know what you're thinking. Oh, Big Bear, be nice to the cripples. No, no. If we didn't have this technology, I totally get it. Like, if they're, like, crawling, like, one-legged, yes. But we're way past that. Like, they have these, like, thrones. And a lot of them are crippled just because they're so fat. Like, they didn't, like, die heroically defending the village, and now we give them a good spot. No, they're like, I had Twinkies, and my leg fell off. Defending the village. Jesus Christ. What a fucking piece of shit. Um, T with Goblins has used 145 bits. Honestly, this is not only misogynistic, it's also depressingly anti-man. Like, do you think so little of yourself that you're only valuable to your children as a financial provider? Yeah, so it it is a lot like... Uh, and I, hey, I gave everybody a content warning. I fully expect, I fully expect an F slur to be dropped, if not, like, harder shit. Like, this, this guy is a real, real asshole. I, I, I did warn everybody. But it's, it's like, it's the same thing as, like, in the hate church. Uh, in that video I showed where I infiltrated, where they talk about just, like, the, the, the route your life is supposed to take. And it's how it's a good thing that, like, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to raise as many kids as you can. And then work until you die. And that's what you do. Like, they, they were saying it like it's a good thing. It's like, that is so fucking depressing that you have convinced yourself that there is nothing more to do in life than just play these roles that have been prescribed to you. Like, what the fuck? And so, and they're like, moms, get to the back. 
I'm here to buy more lubricants or whatever. And, they, and they're like, mm, I'm here. Like, could you imagine being such a piece of shit that you see someone in a wheelchair who, by, by his accounting, he made up an entire story for this person that their leg fell off because he ate too many Twinkies or something, which is not how diabetes works. And your first reaction is just this cruel mocking. Like, it's so, like, dehumanizing. How, how can you say you're, like, pro-human or whatever the fuck and just talk about other people and other lives like this? God, you're such a piece of shit. No, this is my solution. This is my solution. Because I'm not, I don't want to upheaval. I don't want to like change everything. I just think these bastards need to work a little bit. So this is my proposal. Since we buy them their little chairs and their vans, it's all tax money. And now they're like, oh, I eat all these sweets. Okay, I just want to put blades under them so they can mow lawns as they like. <laughs> you know, it's a great idea, dude. So imagine if you see these cripples cruising around like, eh, I'll give you the spot. If on the way back to your car, you at least like take out some grass. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna keep escalating here. <laughs> so, so then you go into like Home Depot and you're checking out, and they're like, um, "Do you want your do you want a discount?" And I'm like, "Yeah, definitely." It's like, "Are you a vet?" I'm like, "Haven't these bastards had enough?" <laughs> I'm like, "Veterans Day is such bullshit, man. If they really left it on the field, they'd be celebrated on Memorial Day." <laughs> oh, oh, it's hilarious, dude. I've done USO tours in the Middle East, man. Don't let them fool you. It's a blast. They're just over there throwing 50 cals at dune coons, just blah, 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 just lippers. No, you guys aren't ready for that one? <laughs> That's fine. No, I know people have their lines, they're like, not veterans, not veterans. Dude, I know a ton of veterans, man. They like these jokes. They don't like to be treated like, uh, like an idol, you know? But if that's what you guys want to do, that's fine with me. All right, moving on. The <laughs> He's getting, he, he just moved on. And also, if you're filming a special, if you are filming a special, you do not have a notepad out. You can have a notepad. I wouldn't say a notepad. Like, if you are really serious about being a comedian, you should only have a notepad at, if you're A, trying all new material, which I guess, I guess he kind of is here, or if you're at an open mic. Like, if you're hosting, uh-uh. If you are featuring and if you're featuring and touring, like you don't you don't need a notepad. You might have one if you're like I said, you're a big touring comedian trying out new stuff. But like he literally just backed off of a joke because it was too much for the audience. Cause like attacking veterans would have gotten him uh gosh, what's the word? Cancelled. Wait, now what's he doing? That's that's like a kind of that's like a virtue signaling. He's like signaling his virtues to the audience. That's so weird. I would figure he'd be against that. Um I realized uh. that we would homeschool our kids because uh, you look at what they're doing in schools and you realize it's up to us. You know, you look at what they're teaching in schools and people just keep bitching. Like someone's going to save them. You know, they're like, can you believe what they're teaching in school? They're saying like a, an eight-year-old is trans. I'm like, don't send them to school. They're like, but I do though. And I'm like, then stop. Like the guy should have stopped eating Twinkies when he got, you know, he lost his leg. Um, but uh, where was I going with that's, that? Oh, yeah. That's a great analog because it's also made up shit that didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, so we started homeschooling and we started this Christian curriculum that's really good. And, <laughs> but as a giant, there's a few stories that I have issues with. You know, the Bible's great and everything, but there is some serious uh, anti-giant bigotry going on there. Like David and Goliath, great story. I understand, you know, when, you, when you're with God, you can kill the giant and everything, right? But like my kids will like try to recreate. Yeah, no, Goliath. this it's Steve like guy, you've also noticed that uh, he said, where was I going with that a few times in a row? Which is something that like you can and should because there's multiple cameras... You can and should easily be able to cut out or edit around that. And it's, again, it's just like, why would you, why would you leave that in? Discordant Vol has used 100 bits. Anti-Nephilim bigotry. We won't stand for it. Jews are pretty cool people, you know. I, uh... <laughs> I, always, uh, I always got along with Jews, you know. I was in Hollywood a while and Jews. Great. Already. He is, he is a Nazi. Like, let's, let's not, um sugarcoat that at all Krim bob and vi joe thank you both for following so this is again content warning i i just like there, there's almost just nothing to say like it's so boring he is running through actual jokes like he does compared to dave rubin he does actually have jokes they're just fucking boring they're just boring as hell uh they, they pretend to really like giants until they don't 
You're like, oh boy, oh boy. Uh. Great, we're getting, oh God, I can't wait for more racial impressions, you stupid, talentless shithead. Um, and I was always like, these guys are great, but then something very interesting happened to me. Um, one of my Jewish friends was very, very distraught about something called the Holocaust, okay? And she was from Israel, and it's all a true story. She was like, the Holocaust, the memory of it affects us all very deeply. And I'm like, oh, that's a bummer, that sucks. Sorry to hear that. She's like, yeah, my sister did not speak for two years because of survivor's guilt. And I'm like, I can't believe you guys are in so much pain. I'm gonna look into this. You know? I did, because I didn't want her to be in so much pain. Like, it was causing her people so much pain. I'm like, no, I was trying to reason with her. I'm like, well, it was a big war. A lot of people died. Let's move past it, right? And she's like, they, did, they died especially bad with us. They turned us into soap. I'm like, why would someone who hates you bathe with you? This is something that also definitely, this, this encounter is totally fucking making it up. And she's like, that is what? I'm like, it started with Greenland. Uh, no, no, I'll back up. No, no, no. And so, uh, and so I really felt for these people because they're in a lot of pain. A lot, you know, great storytellers. There's a lot about their uh, culture I really enjoy, but there's so much pain around the Holocaust. I want to really help their pains. So I looked into it and I ran some numbers and I went to my friend. I'm like, I have the best news ever. Like you and your sister do not need to have survivor. I know why you have survivor's guilt because you literally all survived. Um, and I'm not saying, hey, listen, listen, before we relax, I'm not saying. Is he going to say that he's not saying the Holocaust didn't happen after he just literally, the joke was the Holocaust didn't happen? I know, I agree, dog. And there was a persecution and death and all that, but I'm like, you're like, whole thing is that I, I ran some numbers, it's not possible. So if we have one crematorium and she's just, just like, ah, oh, no! Jesus Christ, he's doing, he's doing the Nick Fuentes, like, if we, how, how many cookies can you bake in an oven bullshit? God, you fucking idiot. No! And then they all kicked me off PayPal and Airbnb and all this stuff. And I'm like, good, I'm you stupid you the dickhead. Ever heard. You don't have to be sad anymore. And then they're like, you're a Holocaust denier. I'm like, not anymore. I'm now a Holocaust supplier. And then I turned into like Vince Vaughn. I'm like, baby, I think it was six billion. Let's get piles and piles of shoes. Come on, baby. How much horror do you want to feel good? And then they're like, that is a fucking terrible Vince Vaughn impression. What do you mean? I'm like, the more horror you, you get fed, the happier you look, which is fucking crazy. And then the anti-Jew guys found me and they're like, oh, you've, you've discovered the Jew. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, like I don't have, I'm not honest to God. I'm really not a hateful guy. I'm like, yeah, they, they're being real. They're being real jerks to me. Honest to God, I'm not a hateful guy. Here, let me talk about people who have mental deficiencies or people who are differently abled. And I'm gonna use the harshest slurs I can think of. And I'm gonna say that gay people are disgusting and shouldn't be in society. I'm not a hateful guy. God, you're such a disingenuous. Like, no self-awareness, none whatsoever. Me right now. And they're like, oh, you know about the Jew. They're like, we are really the special boys. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, we are the master race, not the Jew. The Jew is disgusting, gross. I'm like, then why aren't you in control then? And they're like, because they trick us with the porno movies. We can't stop watching them. And I'm like, you guys sound just like that, man. It's like, it's all about victim consciousness. It's all about if someone else is doing it to you, you get to get away with anything. That's the whole thing. That's why I don't have sacred. Meanwhile, he's talking about how the world is, is nobody's, nobody's, everybody's oppressing the straight white man. Then what, what does that make you, dumbass? Cows. And Anarcho like, Delphus, okay, thank you for following. need to make fun of in rural Missouri? Karis like, can't dance. This is uh, Owen Benjamin. So the veteran thing was a little weird, but mostly it was fine. Because if you do that offend, you're like, oh, how dare you? You lose at life. I figured it out. It's like, it's like the ring in Lord of the Rings. Like, you get to wear the victim ring for a little while, and you're, like, invisible until you're okay. not. Okay. Anarcho Delphus, thank you. you. Disabled. And that happens with truthers sometimes. You know, like, I'm a, I really like the truth community. We're in, like, more of, like, an optimistic, productive truth community. <laughs> the truth can be oh yeah bro santiago uh dog is fine she is i don't know she sniffs something she wants me to get for her but she does not need anything i'm gonna i'm gonna give her some food real quick and turn down the heat it's getting a little hot in here i'm gonna press play so we can get through more of this while i'm feeding the dog but there's some dark ass truthers out there that are like the new world order is not going to stop till we're all dead and slaved and I'm like, no, we're good, man. Just get a garden, have some kids crush, stay hydrated, you know? And they're like, no, no, they're replacing all of us with machines. I'm like, no, I think it's, I think it's gonna be okay. And they're like, no, go into a grocery store and all the cashiers are now just machines. And they will not stop until we're all machines. And one of my buddies who lives in LA is like, bro, I got, they brought the, the cashiers back. And I was telling this to a truther. I'm like, there was so much looting and theft in Los Angeles. I got the best news for you. They had to bring the cashiers back because the one thing the New World Order did not anticipate was n yeah, yeah. And, um, 
And of course the truth is always like, oh, how dare you? Yeah, so notice how that got uh, the biggest cheer of the night. Uh, no, Yenzo, I heard it. I heard it. I still have my, my headset on. Uh, Bree can't flip. How rotten does your brain have to be to watch this guy live and watch himself report on how awful of a person he is and actually laugh at this? Because that was the biggest laugh of the night. For, for people who are just tuning in, a hard R. N-word was his was his punchline. Yeah, what happened to keeping it clean for children? Can't can't do a vet joke, that might offend some people. But you can do this here in this white ass tent. And look look at how fucking proud he is to do it too. Hey, buddy, Mr. Mr. Big Tough Bear, go say that in LA. Go tell that joke in an average comedy club. Not, not this backwoods tent revival bullshit. Go back to the city. Oh, wait, no, you can't because you got taken off PayPal. You got bust off of all these services because nobody fucking wants you there. You are unfit for civil society. They're called African-American. I'm like, no, no, I'm not talking about black people. I'm talking... He's going to say it again. He's, I'm, I'm pausing it now. I'm letting you know. He's going to say it again. I told everybody. Remember when I, I told everybody. Content warning for this guy. Like, I, I don't think we could get more content warning than this. I hate this man. Like, like there's a lot of times where I look at somebody and I don't hate them, I dislike them, I strongly disagree with them. A lot of the people at the hate church are a good example. I think that those people are misled. I think they are incurious in a lot of ways. Matt Walsh is a great example of somebody who I think is overly cruel, but I think is deeply damaged on his own to the point that I don't hate him, even. I pity him, largely. Owen Benjamin. I hate Owen Benjamin. I really do. He is he is the kind of person who has nothing redeemable in their soul. Like there there is nothing about his existence that benefits anyone. If he were gone, everybody he knows would be better off without him. Like the idea that he is trying to say like, "Oh, I'm not a hateful person," and then say this shit as a joke. Discord and just like Chris Rufo. Yeah, Chris Rufo is another one. Um Jack Posobiec is another one. Oh yeah, and and him do, again, actual black comedians. Um, K J H H G G Y thirty four. Actual black comedians have done this joke before. This is a Chris Rock bit, and I'm pretty sure Dave Chappelle has done bits on it too, like distinguishing between an N word and a black person as as like a different as a different thing, which is funny when black people do it. Because they're actually in that culture and they know something. They're not just racist piles of shit. Like, like there's, there's a, again, a lot of jokes are based in truth. And that is a subjective truth that you get from somebody who actually knows that culture. Who grew up in it. Who understands it. You're getting an interior look through a joke. Into a thought process that is different from your own. This, however, is just racism. I guess it, it is an interior look into a thought process that's still different from your own. But... That thought process is just racism. That thought process is just, I want to say the N-word. Like, how can I say the N-word in a joke and get away from it, get away with it in backwoods, bumfuck, uh, deliverance, hillbilly country? Group has... Which, like, here's the thing. I want to be very clear. I don't have anything against people who live in the country. I don't have anything against rural communities. I grew up 
in rural communities. I spent, I've talked about it on a stream, I spent several summers helping out on my family's farm in Palouse, Washington. And if anybody knows where Palouse is, that's pretty bumfuck nowhere. That's pretty nowhere. There are so many good people in rural communities and they are not. Contrary to, I think, a lot of like liberal popular belief, they're not all backwoods, inbred, illiterate hicks. Like there are plenty of intelligent, kind, compassionate, warm people all across the country, in cities, outside of cities, in the backwoods, in the mountains, in the hills, doesn't matter. But these specific people, first off, I, I doubt they're actually even like all that poor. They're probably like upper middle class if, if demographics or anything to go by. But these specific people are irredeemable, like, like conscientiously. They, they don't wish to learn anything. They don't wish to understand or like anything that's different from them, which is why they self-isolate here because nobody else will fucking have them. So they go and they try and start their own little compounds and communes. <sighs> Subgroup that's doing like that shit. You know, white people have white trash, stealing copper, doing meth, stealing shit. Always victims just like, ah, my fucking dad, that's why I gotta... See, again, like he's, he's shitting on white trash. Like the, he is shitting on the stereotype that people summon in their head when like milk toast liberals talk about like oh, when they're all hoity-toity about like oh people out in the country voting for trump and all that shit like these people are not that in terms of economic standing they're probably a couple levels above that <laughs> the cop, you know and everybody knows that like you can do it and then you know black people have the as chris rock famously said i love black people but i hate right everyone knows It's so much more funny when you steal the joke and then tell the joke you stole. That's so much funnier. And then you do a terrible impression on it too. And then of course, Jews have Jews. <laughs> it's the, <laughs> it's the only- That's not true. There are multiple slurs for Jewish people, you stupid prick. Only group where the insult is the name. I find that fascinating because I know black people that hate me. They're like, they moved to Idaho. They're like, my friend. Okay, now, now that the audience has laughed, this uncancelable, brave truth speaker is just going to keep saying this shit because he knows he has the pass. Like, he's just going to keep letting it off. So, obvious content warning. Um, but there is, there is a slur for Jews. I know you have to know it, you stupid dickhead. Uh, Ghost Dunk has resubbed for two months in a row. I first heard that joke about Jews from Louis C.K. years ago. Yeah, it, it doesn't surprise me. Like, we, we just saw him steal a, uh, steal a Chris Rock bit straight up. They're like, yeah, I want to stay away from that criminal shit, you know? It's like, white people do that too. Sometimes you move away from your town. You're like, there's too many meth head, white trash shit. Jews, it's all the same word. You're like, look, if I said you're being a Jew, you have no idea if that's an insult or a fact. <laughs> you know, that's why I like queer language. Because it's like the only way you can tell what someone means with the word Jew is in their eyebrows. There's a difference between Jew and Jew. <laughs> that works surprisingly well. Um, God, this fucking, I, his special, he's talking about how, that works surprisingly well. Another thing you run at an open mic to get a, a little bit of an extra laugh. As you do a joke, you're not sure how it's gonna land and it does well, you're like, oh, okay, people like that. And then people might laugh again at it. You don't do it on a fucking special, you nimrod. I, I mean, I kept, that Could worked. it get any worse? Oh, I mean, I, I'm sure he'll find a way. Um, we're really good friends with this uh, one black family in Idaho. And it's funny, me and my wife have such a good thing going. We have like a, like a homestead and the kids are all happy and everyone's playing. And we always have people come over because when you homeschool, you got to. Yeah, Trans Emerson, joke that here's a, Trans Emerson asking, isn't joke theft a pretty big deal in comedy? It's a huge deal in comedy that will get you ostracized from any community. There, there are people in my community who have like stolen jokes word for word uh, in like the local area and they, they will not get invited to, because the thing about comedy, especially local areas and like small, you know, if, if city comedy scenes is, um, that like everybody knows everybody. So the organizers of events, like the people who put on comedy mics and the people who put on actual shows for like local bars and stuff, they all know each other. So if you're outed in a scene, you're out. 
you're like you might as well pack up for for the most part like that's that's how my comedy community here is um i'm sure in bigger cities like chicago new york la seattle like i'm sure there are more circles to run in but there's really only one or two here so like that person is not is kind of persona non grata right now because they they stole a joke <sighs> yeah, Amy Schumer has been ostracized badly for it. Like, it is, it's something, especially when, and, and look, there's a difference between, there is something to be said for some people just having similar things to say. You know? Like, like thinking that you're the first person to come up with an observation that somebody else has had. But sometimes it's a, it's a little bit too close. And I feel like him literally saying Chris Rock said it after he told the joke is just giving away that he just stole the concept straight up. Like, there, there's nothing new that he's saying. Um, so the Baby Boomers, uh, no. always talk about how their song, their music was so much better and they love no. Bob Dylan. Would you like to hear my impression of Bob Dylan singing? I don't like Bob Dylan that much, but I gotta, I gotta do it for the, yeah, <laughs> yes it happened. If, if his f terrible impressions have been anything to go by right now. Uh. Baby boomers are like, ah, it's so bad. He's like, the end. This is just shitting on like the answer, my friend. And baby boomers, I'm like, dude, it's so bad. And then we had the 90s, we had Pearl Jam. And they didn't even pretend to even say words. And I was like. This is just stealing that Jimmy Fallon bit. Like, when, when Jimmy Fallon used to do, like, stand-up and stuff, he would do impressions. And Jimmy Fallon, if you guys don't know, whatever you think of Jimmy Fallon as a late-night host, which is, like, surely deserved. Like, he's not he's not a great host, and I've never enjoyed watching him there. His comedy stuff, and especially his impressions, are fucking unbelievable. Like, unbelievable. He does a great Chris Rock, a great Robin Williams, like, like <laughs> such a good impressionist. Um, <laughs> my Levy, thank you very much for stopping the laugh now sticker. But yeah, this is, um... Who's that I love? It's called Amazing Grace. You guys know Amazing Grace? He goes... <laughs> 33,000 bales! I need a new ship, cause I got holes in my sails. I got those slave on a blues! This is fucking bad. Aquí, señor. Donde el baño. All right. All right, so this is, uh, this is, uh, this is the positive point of view. This is called Goyim South of, uh, Oh, God. Goyim, great. Uh, Robert Borland, this is like the yum and yana impression of Disturbed, except not funny or good. I don't know what you mean by that. Yamana mana. Do you mean mana mana? Mana mana. Do you mean that? Do you mean mana mana? I've been hoarding my gold and pretending to pray. I put soy in the food to make everybody gay. As long as the goy drink their troubles away, they'll believe every single freaking word I say. And it's pretty great to be a lee like me, but not going like you, drinking lots of Mountain Dew. <clears throat> orange man bad or orange man sweet. Oh, this one, I don't want to say this around kids. I'm skipping that one. You know what it's referring to. Let's just not keep the cycle going. All right. Oh, the next one's bad too. Dude, you said the hard R N word. Like, what? What the fuck is that bad? Like, you stupid dipshit. No, they won't understand it. They won't understand. Getting more debt. Cardi B's getting wet. Gotta vaccinate and listen to Andrew Tate. It's pretty great to be a lead like me, but not going like you. Drinking lots of Mountain Dew. Oh yeah. This fucking like he is off. Like even as a joke. 
his music. There, there's actually a really great um, Michael Glassmeyer is a local comedian who uh, around here in Spokane, and he does. He's actually fucking incredible because he has a really great improv ability to play guitar songs. He's a great guitarist. And he plays on an acoustic guitar and like makes up folk songs using stuff from the audience. It's ridiculous to watch. He's stupid talented. But the thing about being a good musician is that you remain on time. You you like again having a little bit of singing experience. You keep you're you're able to stay in it. And he's not like he's fucking all over the place. Torvez super chatted a seven ninety nine. Would you consider going over Isaac Butterfield, Australian conservative that hides behind comedy while being a reactionary? I will do. I will look up. Isaac Butterfield's, um, let's do this, the band stuff, Isaac Butterfield, and then Roseanne, to, I'll, I'll throw in a set there, because I want to I wanna break up, I need something that's not like a full special. All right. A major, uh, a major piece was brokered this weekend, so I, uh, it's weird playing this song, because I feel a great sense of peace, Bowler Bear brought me a, a BMX bike. So my, my heart, my heart isn't in it like it was, but I do want to go back in time and, uh, and just reminisce a little bit. This next song's about a bike. Uh, whatever. Inside joke shit. All right, let's do Soy Boy. Let's do it. There is a man who's afraid of dairy, and he's proud of the fact his balls never got hairy. He's a BuzzFeed foodie blogger, which means he's unemployed. And he's always pissy and a bit bitchy, because he is bloated from soy. He I, I, like, this is just making shit up to... <sighs> He's a soy boy, he's so annoyed, he's a soy boy, he feels no joy, a weak chin and soft hands and a lot of demands, he's got memory glands, he says his cat is trans cause of all that soy, he's a soy boy, and he's awful to be around. He thinks Sean King is black, and Caitlyn Jenner is a brave and beautiful chick, his ankles are thick, and he says shit like Colin Kaepernick should have been a first round pick. Like, Caitlyn Jenner in 2022 or 2023, whenever, is fucking wild. Oh, Robert Borland, soy is... <laughs> it's part of a now ever-widening net of conspiracy that food, because soy is being used more in food, um, it is emasculating men because it, it contains, like, phytoestrogens. Yeah, like, Discord and Vol said phytoestrogens, too. It, it's just, like... Which, it's not how the body absorbs phytoestrogens. It's not actually, like, it doesn't break it down like estrogen. It's just the dumbest shit in the world. He's an ally to women. When he marches in the streets. But be careful, ladies. He's Hillary on Facebook, but he's Bill in the sheets. Rape! He's a soy boy, he's so annoyed, he's a soy boy, he feels no joy, a weak chin and soft hands and a lot of demands, he's got memory glands, he says his cat is trans cause of all that soy, he's a soy boy, he feels no joy, his ankles are soy, his opinions are soy, he's a socialist and he's always pissed and he's awful to be around. All right guys, enjoy Anchor Bear, I love you, good night. Like look, again, here, I, I exactly what I said at the beginning, I don't think Dave, Dave is not going to be the worst we watch tonight, Con Wise, I think Owen Benjamin is, uh, obviously, for, for like very obvious reasons. Um, but yeah, Jesus, what a fucking piece of shit. Let's, all right, I'm gonna look up Isaac Butterfield. Holy shit! <laughs> like, I've encountered both types of feminism the old school feminists and the new school, right? In fact, I had this one lady, uh, she would have been, I don't know, maybe 70 years old. Old school sort of feminist. I opened a door for her, right? She walked through the door. And you'll never guess what she said to me. She said, thanks. Right? <laughs> I did the same thing for a young chick recently here, right? And I opened the door, chivalry and all that shit, yeah? And I, I should have fucking known. She had a fringe to there. Uh, <laughs> this 21-year-old, gorgeous thing. She walked through the door. She looked at me. She went, ah, you misogynistic piece of shit. And she scattered away. <laughs> Again, these these are not the actual, like, probably most of, like, I'm sure they are his most offensive jokes, but these are the jokes that he just thinks are his most offensive. Like, the, the ones that are really going to trigger the Wokies. Um, 
also things that just absolutely didn't happen, which I, I should stress, I've said that a couple times, I should stress that's a fairly normal thing in comedy for comedians to completely fabricate stories. But usually they do it a little bit better. So that's like, again, the best storytellers are good at making things believable, sucking you into the world and their story, and not just making an entire fabricated world that they live in where everything adheres to their ideological bias, because that's not the way the world actually works. I was standing there thinking to myself, what have I done? Also, I wish I could turn All it up more, but I cannot. Open the door for this young lady, and this is how she treats me. Like, don't get me wrong, I was naked with a huge erection at the time, but... <laughs> but I, I think if you want to be a feminist, be a feminist. You, you go, you do, you girl, whatever you want to fucking do, you know? But I think if you're going to be that, if you're going to be a feminist, don't listen to people like me, because I'm just going to piss you off. Don't listen to the people who talk shit about you behind your back. In fact, if you hear words you do not like, do what other groups have done in the past. Like, for example, African-American people took the N-word, they made that word their word. That's their word. No one else can use it. I don't know anything about this guy, except apparently he's an edgy comedian, so I do want to say content warning applies for this dumb shit in general. Gay people took the F word, that's their word. No one else can do it. Feminists should do the exact same thing. They should take the word that everyone calls them behind their back and make it their word. They should make cunt their word. We did talk earlier about an Australian extremist. But I think it would be remiss of me not to talk about the extremists we know and love. And that is Muslim extremists. <laughs> All right? It's great when you are laughing at the joke, because you th Which, like, here's the thing. I've chuckled. I, I have my joke. I've, I think I've told it on this stream before about um, the trans people in porn comment sections. I, I, I hope everybody has heard that one. If you haven't, it's on my, my Twitter and Instagram. Uh, but that that makes me laugh, but not to the point of interrupting the joke. I can do it. I've got a beard, all right? Uh... <laughs> now, here's the thing about Muslim extremists. They are very, very similar to us, but they just come from a different part of the world, okay? They go to school just like we do, except their school's a little bit different. At our schools, we play games. They play games too. We play games like heads down, thumbs up, Two years ago. <laughs> they play I, again. It shouldn't make you laugh this much. Like, like when you're if you're if you're laughing at a punchline, like you. This is stupid as shit. Um, but also, this is like 2005 comedy, man. Like this is fucking played out. <laughs> Shield Thaden. Uh, Man, I wish I was a mediocre dude comedian. I could just make compilations of every time I bombed and say it was offensive. Yeah. Hey, thumbs down, heads off. <laughs> we used to sing songs at my school. I don't know if you guys know this song, but if you know this song, please sing along, all right? <clears throat> hey, hey, baby. Ooh, I want to know if you be my great song absolute classic they sing that exact same song it's just a little bit different over there okay it's uh how's it go i should have written it down oh. <laughs> low, low, <laughs> i want to blow up some infidels <laughs> i i cannot imagine being like so shit brained that you laugh at this in 2021 like like far worse than hearing it helping set it up is walking in on it <laughs> i want to know right now who's walked in on their parents doing the dirty right there who are you What's your and, and yeah this is a uh compilation so there's not going to be like cohesion between the jokes just so everybody knows we're all on the same page. Uh, Trans Emerson, none of these people understand uh, scansion or meter, and I'm so done with it. Yeah, it's it's really annoying. Grace, how old are you, Grace? 
27. Okay, that's a big check from the lawyers. Now, <laughs> how old were you when this happened? 10 years old. Wow, did you ever bring that up with your parents? No. Are you still friends with your parents? You still get along with them? <laughs> you live at home still? Would you, in front of all these good people, give them a call right now on stage and tell them about it? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please make way on the stage, it's Grace, come on! Come on! Hey, Grace, how are you, love? You're well, nice to meet you. Where's the rest of you? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so take me through who we're we calling this evening. Um, you're going to call your dad, Sam? Oh, my God, I'm not doing this. I'm actually doing this. You're damn right you're doing this. <laughs> Are you nervous? Uh, yeah. You should be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, we've got nowhere to be. I mean... <laughs> oh, Samsung, gross. All right. <laughs> All right, so we're going to call Sam. Oh, my God. Your Please don't answer the phone. Please don't answer If he doesn't phone. answer the phone, you've got to leave a voicemail. <laughs> Can you leave the voicemail? I'll leave the voicemail. <laughs> I'm shaking, I'm actually... No, 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 loudspeaker, what are you doing? <laughs> no, yeah, hello, Xander, I'm gonna fall asleep to the stream. I don't recommend anybody falling, like, fall asleep to my videos, some of them, but I also, I provide way too many sources. I don't think I have... I have very few videos that are just my voice, and I apologize for that, because I know a lot of people, a lot of people uh, like to, to, like, listen to my stuff, and it's so, it's like my, um... One of my partners has been basically Pavlov. She, she falls asleep to my voice too often. Um, somebody said they missed a beat. What's going on? He is having this person come up from the crowd to call their parents because they saw their parents having sex as a kid. And that's the extent of the bit. High no one's concept here. stuff. Oh my God. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Um, hi, Dad. So, uh, I'm on stage at the moment um, with Isaac Butterfield, and he's forcing me to leave a message to tell you that... that I hung up, so that's going to really confuse the fuck out of him. <laughs> Grace, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic. Thank you very much. My first, my opening joke was about the, uh, <laughs> the Christchurch massacre, where... <laughs> Yeah, 52 people died, but that's okay by her because it didn't offend her people. And that's what's fucked up about offense, right? She went through this whole thing and she was like, oh, I thought everything was funny, hilarious, I love your videos, all that type of shit. And then she said, but you should never be able to joke about the Holocaust, about Jews, about people dying like that. And, and I understand where she came from, but what we need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that it's, it's, just, it's just jokes, it's all good. But what really pissed me off with what she said... He's, he's actually getting at something here, and I wonder how far he's going to address it, because, like, yeah, no, uh, Anarcho Delphus, you're, you're noticing that. This is not a bad point. Uh, like, like he, he's addressing people who, like, want everybody to be offended equally until it comes time for them to get offended. Um. Well, she said she'd never watch my videos again. She said she'd never come to a show again. And that's why I got my little phone out, got my thumbs moving, because I'm pretty big on PR, and I replied immediately. I said, listen, love, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the oven. Um. <laughs> that's not bad. That got me in a lot of trouble with the papers here in Australia. You see, there was a crime reporter with the Herald Sun in, uh, in Melbourne that came out and said how much of a piece of shit I was. Every major newspaper in this country came out against me. All that type of shit. I was even on the front page of the Israel Times. <laughs> Little old butts was on the front page of the Israel Times, like, like, which is upsetting for me because now my, uh, my tour of Israel is in jeopardy. <laughs> but uh, my, my, my ticket sales in Palestine are exploding. Um, <laughs> oh, they're just going through the roof. Uh, <laughs> But what do you do? Yeah, it's fine. With all those great Jew and Holocaust jokes. There's great ones out there. What do you do with them? Do you, do you, do you sweep them up off the floor? <laughs> do you put them in a little box and then take that box where no one will ever find it, like in the attic next to Anne Frank? Is that... <laughs> As I said, uh, the opening bit in the Melbourne Comedy Festival that she didn't find offensive at all was about the New Zealand massacre. Now, what happened in Christchurch was an Australian extremist stormed a mosque and took 52 innocent Muslims' lives. And it was a full-on moment for, I think, most people in Australia and New Zealand, if not the world. And I, uh, well, I probably, before I say anything, I should probably ask, is there any Kiwis in the crowd? Yeah. Gross. Um, <laughs> Chacha, bro, yeah, fucking chili bins and all that shit, fuck off. <laughs> Cocksuckers. <laughs> that's, that's the only country I'm okay to say fuck off, we're full to. <laughs> But here's the thing, you've got to be careful with Kiwis. You've got to be careful who's around because a lot of Kiwis are big, strong, hairy, muscly, tattooed-looking women. And... <laughs> they are. 
This Australian extremist stormed this building, this mosque, this room, where people were saying their prayers and going about their business. And for me, the saddest thing about that, it wasn't the 52 people who were killed. It wasn't the countless others who had their lives changed forever because their family members were taken from them. It was the hundreds of people that night who couldn't make it home from nightclubs in Christchurch because all the cabbies were dead. <laughs> Welcome to the show, cockheads. <laughs> like, yeah, Crow V, he's getting chuckles out of me, but I think it's mostly because he's fully going into jokes, unlike the last dude who kept back. Yeah, like, it's it's very... Yeah, no, Ner Neridian, I think you're both nailing it, Neridian and Crow V. The shitty little 15-year-old meme from 15 years ago, it, like, it, it reminds me of the jokes I used to tell with my friends at lunch. Like, like it is... Like, if a shooting happened or something, like, it's it's obviously insensitive, it's obviously shitty, and you're only gonna tell them to your friends, but, like, it's, it is not, and I'm sure he is bigoted towards plenty of other people, but, like, he actually has a cadence and a rhythm to him, like, uh, when... When he said, like, are there any Kiwis here, and somebody calls out and he doesn't even pause and he's like gross like like he has a an expertise that owen benjamin and fucking dave rubin certainly don't have and i think that makes it a lot easier to get into the rhythm of his jokes but like it's also it's just so edgy it's yeah hank boozle it's been a middle school bus ride kind of comedy night yeah uh he's, he's got a good voice for telling jokes but um like the the content itself is like yeah i get it but it's it's i don't know it's fine like it's whatever um it's it it is gabrielle it 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 is just like it's i don't know it's edgy shit like uh eh. speaking of roseanne that brings us to the end of our our brief uh butterfield tour and we might we might end up doing another conservative comedy stream at some point um, because this is the coup de gras. I, I still have Tyler Fisher. I, I still have enough material. We can probably do another stream. I don't want to, I don't want to make it go on too terribly long. Um, but are we ready? For the Fox Nation premiere, Roseanne Barr, cancel this. Uh, because this one's gonna be... Yeah, no, that's the title. That's what they went with. Uh, Christians Against Dinosaurs, thank you very much. Hope you are doing well. I am doing pretty well. I have been incredibly busy, if you guys haven't seen. And again, if you follow me on Patreon, you know I have been working my butt to the bone on the uh, Spider-Man video. And I'm going to finally start getting into editing that tomorrow. I'm, oh, I'm so pumped. And I hope, I really hope everybody likes it because it's, it's exactly the kind of content I want to do more. It's a lot more personal and introspective, but it still brings a lot of the same research that I usually do. Um, and there is a lot of political commentary, so I hope everybody likes that when it comes out. I'm hoping next week sometime. Um, not this current week, but probably Christmas week. Um, but aside from doing well in that, it has been a hell of a night, hasn't it? We have uh, dealt with Dave Rubin barely being able to string a joke together. Dealt with Owen Benjamin dropping hard R N-words like it was ever okay for him to do we listened to uh music from my cover band uh me singing and then now we are here we are at at the end of the world and uh oh my gosh john bainbridge on youtube she missed an obvious pun with this one roseanne bard that would have been that would have been much better i don't think ruben even tried I don't think Ruben even tried now. Oh, and this doesn't have a... This doesn't have a speed up button, y'all. Oh, we're so cooked. I'm about to go on, I'm praying to God.
God that he lets my brains work for once and he uh, protects me from myself. <laughs> she looks rough. Ready to go. Have a great show. Like hate real like people people have talked about how hate will like weather and age you but like I will Astrocore, I will look into that for sure. Thank you very much. Stand by. Good luck. Welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Roseanne Barr. Uh, Salty Llama. Roseanne Barr was a very popular comic and comedian who did, uh, she's most well known for the sitcom Roseanne that she did with John Goodman. And um, she was actually like, used to be progressive, like very progressive once upon a time. And then a, like somewhere in the last 10 years, she went off a conspiratorial deep end. Um, like, I mean, deep, deep flat earth style conspiracy shit. And now, uh, like she she does stuff like this and and we we started the stream showing off uh her her thing with um she was with TP USA on on their stage where she was just like rambling in a very unhinged manner. She really reminds me of Kanye like when I see her mannerisms and how she kind of like rambles and stuff and it's it's very sad because Roseanne for like a lot of people myself included Roseanne is a really good sitcom. I think is it Big Joel or Jose? One of them did a, I think it was Jose who did a video on Roseanne. Um, and you should go check it out. And she, like, it's it's a really good depiction of the working class. It's, like, relatively progressive when it, in its themes, even though it came out in the 90s. She, and she's a funny fucking lady. But she is not, not doing well. Not doing well. Jose did. Yeah, it was Jose. Echo Boss, thank you. Yes, that was that was the other thing. Uh, B. Parker, thank you for bringing that up. She um, compared a black woman to Planet of the Apes and that was what because there was there was a Roseanne revival like a uh there was a Roseanne comeback show essentially with and it had John Goodman it had everybody else and they had to like basically fire her from it and then they just kept going with the Connors which is the the family in the sitcom's last name also I I never like pigtails like it's like a general thing with me like the only pigtails I think are cute are like high up Harley Quinn style pigtails like in uh in Birds of Prey because um, I think that's like kind of cute it's shorter it's not the dangly kind this just reminds me of a child and it, it makes me very uncomfortable The ambient tweet thing. Yeah, the ambient tweet thing was her too. Thank you! Thank you very much! Hi! Thank you! It's so great to be here because I was thinking about it. You know, I kind of started my whole career here in Houston. I love you too. What a privilege it is for you to have me here this evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and of course I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I really do. Are you guys having fun or are you here with your families? <laughs> mm. So let me take a quick... Uh, rally of the troops here. Um, where are my peeps? 
that are going to get really offended if I do not offend everybody. Where are my pizza? <laughs> oh boy, good. There you are. There you are. Don't worry. Uh, David get- Ferguson. This is a so this is a Fox Nation original. Fox Nation is the Fox like streaming platform. I may take a look at it in content because it's like really sad. Like if there if there is one thing Daily Wire is absolutely crushing Fox News on, and it's probably a lot of things at this point, but it is providing actual content. The Fox Nation app is just for I don't know who it's for. It's just for boomers. Like it's it's just like documentaries and like it's Tucker Carlson originals. It's very sad and weird. Get them all tonight. <laughs> That's right. Well, guess what? I moved. Yeah, B. Parker, the recurring theme of the night is buttering up the audience and alluding to being offensive. Here to Texas, too. Isn't that crazy? I really did. My uh, son, I don't know, he's somewhere. My oldest son, he's somewhere here. And uh, oh, my whole family's here in the whole deal. Where is he? My oldest son, my youngest son, my grandson, my godson, my family's here. None of my daughters are here because they uh, they don't agree with me. Oh, a friend, we've already um, we've already looked at Owen Benjamin. We watched his entire special. Uh, if you missed it, you can go check it out on. I will have a stream highlights for both of the for all these uploaded probably in the next couple days. Politically, they're libtards, so they didn't show up. <laughs> But, uh, but uh, no, I moved to Texas, and it's just beautiful because uh, it's a red state, and I love that. And two, it's just beautiful. I bought a beautiful ranch, and what beautiful tundra we have here in Texas. Like, I look out my bedroom window. I can't believe it. I see all these gorgeous little tiny baby deer in my yard eating the grass around my pool. It's so fantastic, you know? because I can pull out my AR-15 and blow them just to smithereens legally. So fantastic. Open carry, bitches. Hell yeah. (laughs) Hell yeah. Anyways, anybody else been fired recently? Well, we'll talk about that a little. Uh, <clears throat> for the people that have been fired, were you able to keep your insurance? Yeah, it's kind of scary. I, I was able to keep my insurance, thank God. But then I started getting real, real nervous because my family, my sons and stuff, they're looking at me weird like that I maybe, maybe I'm worth more dead than alive, you know? I don't know. I get kind of paranoid about it because I watch the IT yeah. channel. Punk on a bike. This is, like, actually kind of sad. Like, this is, like, uh, I don't know. Like, there's something about the aura of this, like, the cadence that is, like, oppressive to me. Like, I, I don't know what it is. There, There is something about the way she's talking about, like, her family and how they're worried and how they've distanced themselves. It is so... It's odd. And, um, what with my big mouth and everything. Well, anyway, my two sons and my grandson and my godson, they're all here kind of to watch over me to make sure <laughs> me and my big mouth don't squander no more of their inheritance, I guess, is what they're here for. Man, I had a rough couple of years there. Uh, I got fired because basically I racially uh, misgendered somebody I thought was a white woman. (laughs) She compared a black woman to an ape. That's not... uh... Huh? I know, I thought the bitch was white, it's true. At some point, I I really, oh, Adequate Emily, this is her big comeback special. This was this was when Fox Nation was really trying to take off. They used this. Uh, this was just like a two, year or two ago. No, this was this year. Get the fuck out. Was that this year? 
Oh, it says 2-12-23. I guess it was this year. They've been trying to coast off of this because they, they, I remember they, um, they sold it as Roseanne's first stand-up special in 16 years. And this is... Oh, you are too, I see. Thank you. But it really, it is that, like, if, if anybody has seen the recent video of Kanye that's going around where he is basically surrounded by sycophants as he's he's droning on and saying these nonsensical things and going on these tangents about like the new world order and Jews controlling everything and everybody around him is just like yeah 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 and it's like like you you need to find people who care enough about you to actually get you help because this is like going up and saying I'm crazy to somebody and everybody in the crowd going woo yeah is like fucking Rough. No, but I've been on psycho meds and by uh, polar meds and, you know, antipsychotic drugs my whole damn life, right? It's no big deal to me. I shouldn't have mixed it with Ambien and then topped it off with three beers, so I have to admit. <laughs> I should not have did that. Oh, here's how the phone call starts. What possible excuse? <laughs> can you have for the egregious thing you have done? You know, and then just God and my upbringing comes in my head and it's like, just tell the truth. Not by design. Thank you very much for subscribing. I am like, this is, this is real. I should have done like maybe opened with this one. This is fucking, I don't know, man. Like, I picked some rough ones to sit through this time. Last time, no, this is a comedy special. This is a, we have an hour left of this. Truth, Roseanne, you always got to tell the truth, right? Tell the truth, the truth will set you free. You know what I'm talking about, ma'am? So I'm like, you're right, father. I'm just going to tell the truth. I thought she's white. <laughs> it's like total silence. <laughs> So I start tap dancing, you know. I... Miss uh, Tamario, I, Timurie, Miss Timurie, I, I don't know. Like the laughter, I, I don't want to say it's forced, but it seems forced. Like I don't, I don't. It, there, there's something. Like there's something about this, and I don't know if it's like the red curtains, like bringing me to like a like a, a twin peaksy headspace, but like this feels like a fucking nightmare. Like this feels like a, a nightmare where you're stuck on stage in front of a room full of faceless people and they laugh at literally everything you say. And it doesn't matter how sad or dark or desperate or depressing it is, no matter how much you call for help, they just keep laughing. Like it's, there's something surreal and dark about this that is like, I don't know. I, I don't know why, but like this is, I, I don't know why this, more than Owen Benjamin sitting in like a tent revival cult uh, place, like this is like putting me in like a dark place. Like this is, this is something from Alan Wake too. Like sincerely. Like it's, it's just so... What you do when you know you're in shit. <laughs> I'm like, hey, don't do nothing to my show, okay? Don't don't cancel me or do nothing to my show, fire me, nothing like that. I'll tell you what, just put me on the Jimmy Kimmel show and on The View and a lot of your other shows you got on the ABC channel, you know, where people, they've been in blackface and everything. I'll go on there and surely they'll understand my mistake. Because <laughs> surely they didn't get fired for that shit. And they'll understand when people do something really stupid. <laughs> and uh, so now they said, well, Roseanne, we'll have to see how the community, that's what he said, we'll have to see how the community reacts. <laughs> yeah, and in my mind, I was thinking, what community? <laughs> the... Uh, Baby blood drinking Democrat community, or um... like, like it should be no surprise that we're, you know, we're we're just seeing more conservative, like, 
uh, neuroses being validated here on stage and people are clapping and cheering for that. But like going into adrenochrome shit is... Man. Yeah, no, also community is a laugh line. Like I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out what the like the laughs are so sporadic. It's so this is this is worse like Alright, so for worst experience is still probably Dave. Like Dave did nothing right. But by pure vibes, this is like a cursed piece of media. Like nobody should watch this. This is like I, I feel like something terrible is going to emerge from my screen. You know? Like, this this feels like it's two degrees removed from, like, being a real-life creepypasta. You're sweet. Thank you so much for coming to see me tonight. Any Jews here tonight? Wow, a lot of Jews. That's pretty amazing. Hi. Hi, Jewish people. There's probably a lot more Jews, but they're kind of ashamed to raise their hand. <laughs> Yeah, I don't blame you. I'm lucky nobody ever thinks I'm Jewish because <laughs> I'm from Utah. We all get to open our mouth. Huh? No more bitches with stitches. We get to open our mouth. That's right, we do, but shut up, bitch. But anyway, um, I mean, I mean. I do, I do love a good I mean right on heckle like, put down. But anyway, um, no, but. No, it's kind of embarrassing to be a Jew, and I, I would like to take this opportunity to kind of apologize to the Gentile nations for the Jewish people. Like, you know, like Epstein, Weinstein, and all these here. All these, name two. Sorry. I love that. I am a Jew, and people don't think I'm Jewish because I'm not from the East Coast or nothing. I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. Is that not, I guess, Utah is Any known Mormons for being Mormon, here? I guess, yeah. I, I was like, is that, yeah, God, the one God, thing Utah Mormons, is known for is being, uh, literally being Mormon. That would Jewish, though, Salt Lake City, Utah. <laughs> Boy, my family, we stuck out like a sore thumb there in Mormon, Utah, you know, because we only had the one mother, and so that was where, so she... She had to do all the mothering by herself. That was kind of rough on her. And my mother was the most beautiful Jewish woman in the Jewish community. That's what everybody said all the time. There's like, she looked like Elizabeth Taylor. That's what everybody said. And she had a gorgeous figure, you know, my mother. And she managed to snare the one Jewish football hero at Westside high school, which was my daddy. He was a football hero there. He played center at Westside High, and he was a big old, you know, football hero. Are and we, are we against bar, skipping through a little like bit of this barrel. to the offensive shit? Are we against so skipping through quite it? Quite a couple. And uh, they had me, and guess whose body I inherited? <laughs> Not my mother's, but my dad's. Uh, body built like a barrel, uh, with no waist and no ass cheeks whatsoever. It was very sad, very sad for a girl. <laughs> if I was gonna hit you, it would have made some kind of a beeping noise, you know? The Tesla is prepared for hitting things and it warns you. Well, I didn't hit you, you crazy bitch. And, uh... <laughs> I said, you know what you're doing? You just know I'm in show business, so you smell some money. That's what you're doing, right? You see where I'm going with this? A lot of people are like that. I go, you smell money because I'm in show business. You thought, you know, you can start some shit with me and I have to give you a settlement. That's what you're doing. You're not the first and, you know, you're probably not going to be the last. She goes, that is not true, Roseanne. I'll have you know. <laughs> She goes, I will have you know that I am also in show business, okay? The last 24 years, I was Bette Midler's dresser. I'll have you know that. (laughs) 
I'm like, yeah, well, blowing cocaine up Bette Midler's asshole is not show business, is it? <laughs> then she moves in for the kill. I think you're driving around drunk, Roseanne. I said, I'll have you know, I am an actress. And I know how to maintain. Yeah, no, like adequate Emily, just ranting, old people ranting you their problems. Like it really is. Life. That's what's wrong with you. Because that's what we Jews do when we're losing an argument, right? You are an anti Semite. <laughs> and yes, sorry, I had to eat something real quick. I was getting hangry. She goes, My name is Goldberg. <laughs> I'm like, Well, then I'm an anti Semite. <laughs> And I sped away in my test. Like, like we, we were talking earlier about how some jokes, I in, like I good comedians, which <laughs> Roseanne is nothing if not an actually, of all the people we've watched, she is probably the one with the actual most experience. So, like, she has written in laugh breaks naturally into her stuff, but it's so weird because, like, this is her audience, and they're still, they're not like laughing at the right times and that throws any comedian off the rhythm like if you if you ever go to an open mic and you talk to the comedians on a weird night they'll be like yeah it was just a fucking weird night and what that means when comedians say it was a weird night at like an open mic or a show means that for whatever reason doesn't matter if, if it was something in the water something in the moon people were laughing at the wrong things and that's what's happening here i feel um i i'm I think, I think. I'm, I'm trying to put into words why this feels so fucking weird. Gender was all smashed in. <laughs> Ooh. Uh oh. Can you believe that it has been two or three years since we was all in the quarantine? Can you believe back that far? I'm glad you're out. I'm glad we can come out. Quarantine. Remember all that? You know, I figured out Q, Q, it stands for quarantine. It wasn't any of that who's going to get arrested bullshit. It stands for. That is, uh, that's another point where I think she was expecting some kind of laugh or reaction. And, um, that was pure silence. That, you could hear a pin drop. Quarantine. Q, the great awakening. You know why? Because you had to be with your goddamn family in the house and you couldn't get out of there. You couldn't go to the gym. You couldn't go to a restaurant. You couldn't get away. You couldn't go to nobody else's house. You were stuck there in the shit with your friggin' family and couldn't get away. That's why they say the great awakening. You had to deal with that shit and you couldn't run anymore. <laughs> Dang. I was smoking a lot of cigarettes at the beginning of the quarantine there. After you know. getting fired, I start smoking again. And I love to smoke. But my kids ganged up on the, they're like, you better quit smoking, Mom, because you're going to get COVID and then you're going to have to go to the hospital and they'll put them things down your throat and kill you like they do in New York. You better quit smoking. So I did quit smoking, and know what happened as soon as I quit smoking? As soon as I quit, I got the COVID. The minute I quit smoking. The COVID. And then I read that cigarette smoking actually protects you from getting the COVID. That's what I knew. Everything was bullshit. <laughs> it's all bullshit and nothing but lies. Every single damn thing. <laughs> I've had the COVID four times now. The COVID. Stop calling it the COVID. And that I is. I lost all my ah! uh, taste. You know, have no taste and no smell either. All this time, you know. But I look at it like it's, you know, a silver lining in the COVID cloud. Cause you know, I don't eat so much. I'm not wanting to eat everything because it don't taste that good. So I lost some weight. You know. Thanks, Lord. <laughs> 
Once I got the COVID, though, and saw that my kids weren't going to come over, I was like, man, I'm going to get the I don't think COVID. she's doing calling it the COVID I'm as a joke. Get COVID that never quits. Well, it's wonderful. I was like living in a rest home is what it was like there. I had an assistant that cooked for me and brought me tea, and none of my family ever Sorry, eight minutes ago, Larry Fishman has super chatted five dollars. This poor woman needs estrogen and progesterone. It's not just for trans girlies. No, she she needs she needs counseling. She needs help, actual help. Came over. Oh my God, it was so great. It was the first time in my life that I haven't had to, you know, take care of nobody's kids or do their goddamn laundry or get out of bed and do shopping for any of that shit. I just laid there in bed talking to God and right. Also, it's very. It's not funny, but it is very noticeable that she talks about how, like, she's not going to take anything from elitist billionaires, and she's not going to trust any of those big, rich elites. But then she has a house in Hawaii and a house in Texas that she travels between. You know who can do that shit? The elite. Right and jokes. It was fantastic. want my grandkids coming over because they're always sick. And Mockingbird, they I have no idea. Time. My daughter thinks it's good that they're sick. Your mom thinks it's good that the kids are sick. It always drives me nuts. She goes, it's good they're sick because they're developing their anti, uh, what do you call it? Yeah. Their immunity. They're getting their immunities. It's good that they're sick. Yeah, well, I'm 70. What about my immunities, bitch? <laughs> You bring over the kids with the green snot in their nose and it takes me a month to get over it. Stay home, I'll watch them on FaceTime. <laughs> right? It was so much better. It was just great. How many of you's got the backs? <laughs> Few of you, you probably had to get it right. Were you forced to get the backs? Yeah. Boy, what a... That makes me mad they force people to get the backs. I hope they have to pay for that, what they did to us. Did you get any of that myocardial? See, and now, now everybody is, you can hear them starting to get a little bit more engaged now that she's not pretending, like, she isn't talking about COVID as a real thing anymore. So they're like, yes, fuck the vax. Like, they're they're feeling their ideological points being pushed and they're, they're starting to react to that. You can actually hear it shifting. It's so bizarre or the facial paralysis or, you know, the adult dropping dead syndrome or any of that shit. <laughs> Get any of that? What happened to people that they start believing for some reason that this government had their best interest at heart? What? Uh, my whole family's uh, Solar Lander. I'm scared. Card, you know, as I said, and uh, they was called me a conspiracy theorist the whole time, but everything I said turned out to be true. Did they apologize? Hell no. They never apologize. They never admit they're wrong, do they? Now, my whole family is sick, what with blood clots and this and that and the other. They're all sick. I'm the only healthy one. You I'm got COVID four times. You're lucky to be alive. What the fuck? <laughs> At your age? Like... What happened to people, though? How could they line up to take these shots from this government, knowing that this government gave this is, small... This is just literally... Like, this is fucking rough. Fox infested blankets to the First Nations people. You, again, she she's going into this weird middle ground between, like, her old progressivism and her new, very far right-leaning conspiracy shit. And so I think that's where she is. She's in this ground where she doesn't, tr like, you know, she's not trusting anybody. And it's very, it sounds very libertarian. And I don't know if the Fox News uh, crowd is going to quite buy it. Gave syphilis to Rhythmic yelling. black prisoners in Tuskegee. 
told us there was weapons of mass destruction before they leveled Iraq and destroyed Libya, told us Fen Fen was safe and then all the fucking fat people died. <laughs> what happened? And they're like, hey, I, can I get that booster? Can I get that shot in those 15 boosters? Would you mind giving my daughter here that shot right in her eyeball? She, she's saying this like a political point, but like all of those things are drastically different. Well, all of them absolutely wrong, fucked up by the government, been covered up and lied about for years and years. All of those are drastically different than a concentrated public effort to make sure people are vaccinated against a disease that killed hundreds of thousands. You fucking idiot. Like... Talking about black ops and government conspiracies to go invade other countries and fucking shitheel racist assholes running programs that experimented on minorities is not the same. It's, it's not. Like, the government is fucking huge. Has it done terrible things? Yes. Is everything it does terrible? No. Like, wh th there, there's no commonality between these points. Well, after she's born... Could you give her 10 of those right in the eyeball? Could you give her a shot right in her little baby clip? Could you do that for me, Mr. Biden? What's wrong with people? Uh, what? Uh, 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 oh. That is so f I wish I didn't hear that. Like, I have heard a lot of dark shit and a lot of dark shit tonight. But, like, that is awful. What the fuck? Like... And that seems like it was off the dome, too. That doesn't seem like it was pre-determined, like, prepared. Like, that... Why? Why? That is so vile. And unnecessary. Yeah, adequate ammo. Like, there's, like... Vile. Like, just terrible. What the fuck? What's wrong with them? Notice how everybody is getting so quiet. Wearer. Like, this they is... They want to be lied to. They want to be lied to because they are so used to it. You can't wake them up because you can't wake up people that are pre... Uh, yeah, like, I... I, I don't want to... Like, Owen using the hard R is... Sorry, my dog is, is playing with one of her toys. Owen using the hard R is, like, terrible and awful and just rancid. But I literally expect it from a Nazi piece of shit like him. Like, I I know, like, and, and here's the thing. You know exactly, just from that stand-up special, you know exactly what he says in private. Like, you know the litany of slurs, the the terribly violent things he, he fantasizes about. You can tell from the way he felt so comfortable after he dropped that first N-word and the entire crowd lit up and he just kept doing it and kept doing it. Like, you can tell he is a piece of shit. This is, this is different because while Owen is a piece of shit, I have no doubt that he's in general control of his faculties. This is someone who, as we've said before, I think genuinely needs help. And conjuring that image and tying it into Biden and the vaccine is unhinged to a point that, like, it honestly strains credulity. Like, it is, this, like... It, it is way darker. And I, I feel like that's just me as somebody who has, I've spent so much time and everybody knows this. I spent so much time steeped in these spaces, uh, mostly through the stream and the channel trying to understand. And, and, and of course, through podcasts like QAnon Anonymous and uh, Knowledge Fight and Behind the Bastards and stuff like that, trying to understand the psychology, the pathology behind people who engage in hate and stuff like this. But this is 
Like, like, and I feel like that's the reason why I can look at something like Owen. I still want to punch him in the face. You know, I still, like, I have a visceral reaction to that. But I can say, yeah, that's, that's a racist. Whereas this is something deeper and darker in a, like, very uncomfortable way. Um... Yeah, Discord and Vol, it's like uh, intrusive thought given voice and form. And thank you, Jitters XP, for the 100 bucks. It's just so. And it, it, like, it came out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Oh. Pretending to be asleep. That's what I figured. Nobody. Nobody in their lives has ever cared enough to tell them the damn truth. It's our fault, us baby boomers. We ruined their lives. We lied to them all the way. We lied to them and ruined their lives. For example, my son, he's 27 years old. I'm very proud of him. He's the only one of my children who ever went to college and graduated. I couldn't be more proud. Yeah, B. But Parker, it's gross how Fox News is enabling in my us. Office, took over my office. I can't even walk in my office, what with the empty beer cans and the dirty socks. And all he does is sit there playing video games all night long, every night. Call of Duty, uh, what's that other one? Fortnite, Call of Duty, and what's that other one? Grand Theft Auto. That's his whole life, for God's sake. Sitting there asking me stupid questions I have no idea how to answer. Who's my real father? What am I supposed to say about things like that? I mean... Again, with proper setup, that was actually like, that would have been a totally solid joke. Can somebody please send her to a nursing home with no return labels? Uh, like that, that could have been a totally solid joke, but like she just kind of ambled through it and had to uh, like ask, it got, like it, it told a... The, the flow on that was totally fucked up. Like, you, you should have started it with, like, oh, he stays up all night playing Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, and ask me all these dumb questions, like, who's his father? Like, that's the flow, you, not obviously in my cadence, but, like, she should have hit something for her, and it just, like, it ground it to a halt. So when she got to the punchline, it's like, you, you need to have that, that build up there. It, it, the flow is important. If I haven't stressed it enough, the flow is important. These people, they have no concept of reality. They've been living in a bubble forever. Asking questions have nothing to do with the real world. Again, highly ironic that somebody who has two houses, who drives an expensive car, who is friends with all these rich people, wants to talk about other... And, and has the time to spend her days on conspiracy theories wants to talk about how other people live in a bubble what is my gender mom here we go everybody it's the moment you've all been waiting for here it is here's the big laugh line here's the one that went around everybody get your get your photos out get your <sighs> what is my gender your gender is Get a job, that's your gender. <laughs> what are they thinking? Ask, what is a woman? They don't know that. That one they're asking all the time, what is a woman? That one they're asking? No, Matt, what, conservatives are asking that. Conservatives cannot define it for themselves. Uh, there are plenty of biologically backed up, scientifically backed up, well-vetted, well-sourced arguments for trans people being women, for women being a more societal role, for gender expression. They never want to take those into account because they're dum-dums. And that's how dum-dums act. So this idea of like, oh, trans people are always saying, what is a woman is so fucking disingenuous. Get, uh, get needs to get job self a copy of Undertale. <laughs> Thank you, Jitters XP. What do you want, dog? You can hear my dog whining. I still don't know what she wants. Like, I think a ball or something bounced in an alcove and I can't get it. Is it, is it behind the skateboard? She is afraid of my skateboard for some reason. I don't know why. I'll tell you what a woman is. A woman is me. That's what a 
woman is, okay? Job self. A woman is someone who cleans up everybody else's shit. That's what a woman is. A woman is somebody whose boobs hang down to her knees with a prolapsed uterus from giving birth to five ungrateful little privileged bastards that have never had to work for anything in their whole damn life. <laughs> my pronouns are kiss my ass. Yeah, I wonder why, I just noticed that uh, somebody else said, like, they, so the, the thing, what is a woman is me and the, my pronouns are kiss my ass. Those made the rounds earlier this year. Um, and I, I want to say they were part of the, the Fox, like, marketing strategy. Like, they were, they were the clips that they grabbed for the trailer to get people excited about this. And, um... Notably, the one thing I didn't see included in that was the talking about the prolapse uterus. That was something that um, they left out. They left that out of the marketing material. Wonder why. And I just want to say to all those girls that are all so damn upset about the, them overturning the Roe v. Wade thing, don't get so damn upset about it. You are never going to get pregnant. You got the vax. <laughs> what the fuck? A vaccine makes you sterile, I guess, is the conspiracy point. She's, she's, uh. You're never going to have a baby. Chill out. Yeah. I do have a message for today's women. I'm trying to get Kleenex out of this pocket. <laughs> there it is. I do have a message this for is... today's women. I think it's important. Women, keep your penis in your pants. There's no excuse for this kind of behavior. That's, that's not as bad as it could have been. Take some responsibility for your own actions, women. These Me Too whores, they are so on my last nerve. What the fuck? You know what I mean? How, how, how do you open a set? Where, where's the ideological consistency here between opening a set talking about Jeffrey Epstein and Harvey Weinstein Weinstein being the guy who kicked off the whole Me Too thing. And then talk about calling Me Too survivors whores. Like, where, where is the consistency there? What the fuck? If you are going to go to a Disney producer's room at 3 a.m., are you kidding me? then you're not going to turn around and cry about it and try to get some money out of it. You're not. Like, she's, she's just yelling this shit out, and I think she's expecting applause, but, again, there's not any jokes. But at this point, the, the audience is like... I feel like so many of them are, like, in stunned silence. The world has changed a lot since I was alive. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's changed so much. When I was young, we gals used to go to parties hoping to get drunk so we'd wake up pulling a train of five guys just for fun. <laughs> and nobody thought anything about it. Mockingbird, I would stop, but I also paid for this one, so I have to see it through to the end. It was no big deal, you know what I mean? <sighs> Remember when you were young and you got molested? It's your fault. Remember that? <laughs> Remember? My mom's like, didn't I tell you not to go around old Joe when he comes to the corner on his bike? I told you to stay away from him. 
You know what he does to the young girls, and there you are, running up there to the corner, knowing what he is going to do to you, and then you complain about it. This is, um... He buys us ice cream. This is... Like, this get, This is getting darker. Like, this is starting to feel like an we admission. We didn't do yoga stretches. Um, you know what I mean? We didn't drink caramel pumpkin latte uh, macchiato white woman caramel drinks. We didn't do that. I think we already said, we said caramel twice in there. We drank tab and fresca and shit that had saccharin in it. They gave us liver cancer, and we were happy to have it. Because <laughs> we were tough. Unlike you people, you young people. Privileged. Just privileged. That's what I realized in quarantine. Privilege really, it kills. Privilege is what ruins lives when you start thinking, you know, that the world needs to be pretty for you. Well, it don't, right? Just because yeah, you've got, got a degree in gender studies, that don't mean shit. You're not going to get a job no place. You can't even get a job at Ho Ho's Donuts. Didn't I tell you that? I told you. <laughs> Privilege kills and bliss is ignorance. I turn those around. Bliss is ignorance. This is right? like this is like sub Jordan I Peterson philosophy. Three. Yeah, sorry. One of my one of my partners came in, so my dog is is very excited. I had three different litters with three different men because I'm a whore, you know what I mean, lady. And um, parenting has changed so much, too. Yeah, no, Spencer Skater, that's like, she's literally saying, yeah, my generation was okay with sexual assault. Like, what the fuck it's, are you uh, talking yeah, about? Back in my day. Like, and, and she's not even, like, look, the last guy we were looking at, asshole. But the jokes he was making, when he made a Holocaust joke, he was making a joke. Like, it was, it was constructed in the way of a joke. Bale, thank you very much for super chatting. I feel your pain. I'm, I'm glad we're all able to suffer. All 500 of us are able to suffer through this together. Um, like, like and, and kind of the same with Owen. Is like, Owen was actually making a joke. This is like the weird neuroses of Owen, but then the rambling of Dave. Like, it... I, I was expecting a lot more charisma, a lot more know-how from Roseanne, considering she is such a like well-known name and she's done comedy before, even if she would be a little bit rusty. But this is like, yeah, at least she isn't. I don't know. That one thing she said is pretty, not a slur, but like, uh, that's like an all-time worst thing. This is public therapy for her, and it's not helping anyone. Gray Geiger, thank you for super chatting five bucks. Um, yeah, public therapy, I think, is a good way to describe how awful this is. <clears throat> Who else thank you for following Smelly Cat. In the 50s. <laughs> yeah, I have three daughters. I told you they're very liberal, but they're in their late 40s and 50s. Three daughters in menopause. That's when you know you're old. For God's sake, that's when you know you're old, right? There's no men left in our country. Have you noticed that? All the men they want. Okay, just like no, just completely like no cohesion there. Absolute non sequitur. It's like, oh shit, what else was I going to rant about? All right, men. There are no men left. Great. I can't wait to see where this is going to go. I want to be women or else they're just complete pussies and losers. Oh, are we going to talk? I bet we're going to talk about soy. Who, who thinks we're going to talk about soy? Larry Fishman, Super Chat, $10. Thank you very much. Boomers do hate the kids. That's why my mom is doing alone after my transition. I am, I am sorry to hear that. Have you noticed that there's no- I know, I know that is uh, very rough to go through and I hope you are surrounded by people who love you and care for you for who you are. Discordant Vol, the last time a colon was executed for treason upon this stage. <laughs> Thank you. Men with any kind of spine left, they've all been beaten down. What happened to the men? Are there any- Like, God damn, like, 
it, these lines, like I, I keep, and maybe it's just because of the other things that I've looked at today, but I, I keep expecting, like you heard to be like, oh, what happened to the men? I'm expecting applause, but I feel like the crowd just has no fucking idea where she's going. And it's like, what, what? Any men here tonight who would define their self? Oh, sure. Really? Okay, well, let's take this little test. You think you're a man, huh? You think you're strong, yeah? Mr. Man, well, let's see. I defy any of you men who say you're strong and manly and this and that. Well, I defy you to go home tonight and tell your wife or girlfriend that she needs to sit down and shut her yap. <laughs> tell her you need to sit down and shut up and get off every other woman in the world's case. Stop bitching about every other woman and trying to stir up shit for them. Close your mouth and make me a sandwich. <laughs> Things would be a lot better. Am I right? This and is just boomer. I hate my wife shit, except it's coming from the wife. Like this is, this is like actually even more sad. Like, man. I bet none of you will do it either. None of you will do it because you're scared shitless. I know it. Women None of you are, will talk what, shit about your wives because you're scared. To women and they're just all completely brainwashed. We'll do anything for dick. Anything for dick. What happened? We used to like freedom and if, liberty. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna talk about like these big sweeping issues and go from topic to topic, you don't want your, generally your concepts to overlap or contradict each other. Like, you don't want to talk about how women would do anything for dick, but then say, ah, oh, there are no men anymore. They all want to become women. Because then in that fictional world, in the, the concept you're creating, where are the women going to get the dick from? Aside from, you know, trans women, but that's not what she's going for. Like, it, it's just like, okay, so there aren't any real men anymore and there aren't any real women anymore. So what's, what, like, where, where are we going with this premise? And she's not following it to anywhere interesting. She's just like kind of forgetting that she's making these points and this and that and being independent now it's anything for dick putting plastic in your boobs and your butt your calves your eyes your cheeks just to get some guy to get what an erection around you for god's sake dancing around erect phalluses that's your whole world for god's sake now you're dick motized you're dick tarted for christ's sake <laughs> What is that about? You're on hormones. Wake up. They've got all the women on the hormones because this is what they told me, Roseanne. Unfortunately, the only thing... Like, if, if you needed any validation for thinking that, like, Roseanne was just a pure conspiracy, rambling, unhinged boomer, this should do it for you. Like, her yelling to a stage of people not laughing, being like... Roseanne, they've got all the women on the hormones. It's like fucking, it's... Thin on you is your vaginal walls, and so you need to get on hormones so that, so that they'll plump up and you'll be able to enjoy sex with your boyfriend. What? Those days are over. It, it's just over. You shouldn't even, right? You people don't agree with me. Who's older than me? Who's older than 70? You're, how old are you? 71. 71, what's your name? Kathy. Kathy, so you're all a big sex fiend? <laughs> you're 71 and you're a big sex fiend, is that what you're saying? Not at all. Oh, you, are, you, are, you are identify with me that we ought to be over all this. Robbie Bobbin, saying? thank you very much for subscribing. I love you, girl. <laughs> You've got a working brain there. Good, I'm glad. Now, how many of you women are trying to plump up your vaginal wall so you can have sex with a guy you've lived with for 15 years and are sick of? I'd like to know that. 
Yeah, no, the audience, Garden of Fragile Egos, like, the audience, I feel, is completely lost. Like, I'm... I'm... I've been well, watching this whole thing. I'm still having a hard time, like, kind of following. I'm old, like I said. And, uh... I was thinking about a lot of people have a bucket list, you know? I don't really want to bungee jump off the Eiffel Tower or any of that shit. I got a fuck it list. Uh, this is yeah. not a new joke either. Stuff I want to stop doing. Damn, Amy Schumer got old. I kick the breathing habit. <laughs> Stealing, aww. Oh. Stop doing. Like, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stop pretending to be interested when old people pull out pictures of their grandkids. You know? Who Who is... Like, put that shit away. You you haven't that got that much like an left to go. Like, you're... Braces. Put who's, that shit what away. old people are pulling out pictures of their grandkids around you? I'm never going to nobody's wedding if they've been married more than three times. <laughs> Like, let me know if you're still together after seven or so years, and I'll send you a to Uh, Jitters XP for 100 bitty. Semi-unrelated me when I see the f femme cell turf at Jersey Max and her husband respects my pronouns. Poster or something. <laughs> Whore. Um, I'm not going to listen when old people start griping about Yeah, no, she's saying, she's issues. talking about old really people as if she's not that. old. Well, Roseanne, you know, I've got the sciatica and the fibromyalgia going this way and that, meeting up here at the waist, going down my, my leg here, and it's really painful, and I can barely, oh, I had to go to the doctor the other day because I could barely bend over and move there. Hey, why don't you do me a favor and just die already, okay? Because I'm your friend, I'll put in an appearance at your funeral, but I just don't have time for this shit now. Another thing, I'm not going to be nice to those Jehovah's Witness people that come over there. God, she not really, like, I've, I've said boomership before, but, like, literally saying Jehovah's Witless, that, that might be the one that took me out. Like, that is... ...on my door asking me where I plan on spending eternity. Oh. I'm going to say, come on in. Come on. But you got to take your pants off because it's Satan's birthday. What is happening? Oh, the Jehovah's Witness thing, right. And last but not least, I'm never going on another date with Bill Cosby. You can believe that. Never. That... That joke felt like it fell out of the middle of the act. Like, that felt like when she was talking about the Me Too thing, that's when it should have been. Because, again, just no, no cohesion here. My butt hurt after that. Okay. That's... Well, another thing in the quarantine is that I was getting... Again, like, you don't say last but not least and then continue with another thing, I but there, whatever. I was by myself there. And, uh... So I know there's probably some of you here that wants me to do a psychic reading for you while we're all here together. If you've got a question about your future, and it needs to be a real question, you know, thought out. Discord and Vol, the Baba Yaga's comedy tour has not gone well. If you your future, you might be very, very surprised oh. at how accurate I am and how psychic, how very, very psychic I am. Not crowd work. Okay. Is there anybody who wants me to answer their psychic? Yes, over here, sir. I bought a very expensive trip for my wife and myself to go to Homer, Alaska for a vacation oh. for our anniversary. Oh. I just want to know if I'm going to get lucky. And <laughs> no, you're still going to have to fuck her. I'm sorry to say that. Okay, that's not... I'm sorry to say that. That's not terrible. Boy, I said it already that's not terrible. Times, didn't I? I failed. <sighs> sorry, sir. That's... I'm still going to have to have sex with her, so you won't be getting lucky. But then you uh, explained the joke. Like, come yes, on. 
That was everybody laughed because they got it. Like, uh, will you get married? Do you have somebody you're engaged to? And do you know anybody you want to marry? You haven't met nobody to marry yet. You've been married once, but you don't know nobody. And what's your time limit? Because you look like you're getting long in the tooth. <laughs> Do you have a time limit? You don't need to have any children or nothing, so you just want companionship. Okay, let's see. What's your name? Carolyn. Carolyn, where do you live? Michigan. Michigan. Oh, yeah, they like to marry there in Michigan. <laughs> I think you will be getting married within the next six months. I see it. It's going to be a wonderful woman. You're going to really fall madly in love. It's going to be a fantastic thing. Good luck. Let me know how that works out. Um, you, sir, in the blue. Yeah, I've been uh, working out and taking keto diet for about four months now. Am I bringing you back to my 42 suit again? You've been losing weight, and you wonder if you'll get back to wearing your size 42 suit again. Yes, you will, sir. They'll bury you in it. <laughs> You're welcome. But yeah. Oh, yeah, like, that's, that's okay. A tour in my future? I do. They were talking to me about you it. You know, that, like, that's weird. Like, yes, you will, sir. They'll bear you in it. That's okay. That's pretty good. The one with the lesbian is befuddling. Like, that is, that's not a, like, that's not a joke. That, like, that felt like a real thing. That's just so, that's so weird. And I said, yeah, I, I think so. You know, I, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good. Uh. You know, I might do a tour, right? Do not, no, I think no. That I'm, I'm spreading the love, you know? I think that I'm helpful with getting people to spread the love, you know what I mean? Like right now, I have a very good suggestion for all my fans and all y'all here that I love you so much. Um, now, a lot of us are on antidepressants and we're very depressed and this and that. Uh, over the quarantine and the fact of what they've done to us. <laughs> the way she keeps saying through. what they but, uh, have I to do is like way, so... drug-free, alcohol-free, to be able to lift my own spirits and I want to pass it on to you. And it really, really works, too. Now, what it is, what I do is... If she goes on tour, there is no I God perpetual grimace on YouTube. suicide notes to everyone in my family. <laughs> Blaming them for my death. And it really helps. I mean, it really lifts me up in my spirits, you know? See, again, like, really, there's... Really does it so well. I'm, I'm willing to bet this will probably just be more sad than funny. But the dark stuff that she's really trying to tackle here has real promise as a premise for a joke. Like, it is... It's already dark and shocking enough to not be overly offensive unless she takes it into another bizarre turn like she did earlier... But, like, I just, I think that the, her tone is so uh, self-pitying that it just kind of makes what could be really, like, dark and, uh, like, really bleak, but still funny, into something that's just kind of sad, like this whole thing. Wonderful. Dear Mom. Remember those party dresses you sewed for me and forced me to wear to third grade because you said they were slenderizing? <laughs> the ones with the hoop skirts that I couldn't See, lift up fast this is enough just or push out of the way sad. on the potty causing me to pee on the back of them and then to be laughed at by all the other students the entire day. Well, now it seems that I've killed myself and I just want you to know that you're to blame. <laughs> Yeah, she sound, Crow V is good on the, the tone on um, YouTube. She sounds bitter. It's hard to tell what's a joke. Stress. Yeah. I might be taking those Western swing dancing classes with you and your new boyfriend, Arnie, right now. But instead, I'm stiff and cold and hanging in the closet like that goddamn dress. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> it's just... It's just amazing how it's lifting. 
Dear daughter, when you called me a racist simply because I told you that your boyfriend was an unemployed, crack-smoking Mexican fellow, that in no way meant that I don't love the Mexican people themselves, as I do. As Again, I this is just venting you, very you public could have frustrations. Mexican gentleman who didn't smoke crack, had a job and no facial tattoos, and I would have celebrated with you. But now I'm rolled up in the dirt like a burrito, and it's your fault I'm dead. This is. Hasta la vista, baby. And something that really, really pisses me off here. Dear McDonald's, <laughs> your refusal to offer the McRib sandwich year round, because you never know when it's going to come back, do you? You think they could afford... No, Crovey, you bring up a really good point. She mentioned issues with her mom earlier that sounded very bitter. Um, and she mentioned issues with her mom around the abuse stuff, which is fucking gross. Then she talks bitterly about her own daughters. And like... But, like, the way she's talking, she's not, like, necessarily even making, like, oh, I hate my wife jokes. Like, she's just venting frustrations in a way that feels, f like... Des like uncomfortable like it's it's gross some kind of advertising plan where they like say and and i feel like this is again by by nature of being so like almost personal and intimate i feel like this special has been worse to watch than the other ones because it's not like she's exclusively talking about how like oh the jews control the world or like ah oh, they don't want you to say the n-word or like this other dumb bullshit she's really like just talking about her own personal neuroses. I've used that word, and that's the only thing that can really come to mind right now. The narrator, 9,000, use 95 bits. You'll be sorry when I'm dead. Things said by angry children and old boomers. Yeah. Ugh. Rib, that comes on July 4th. July is the time for the McRib. Or they could go, Christmas is for the McRib or just anything. But no, they never tell us when it's going to come back, do they? So we can't plan our lives or anything. <laughs> Dear McDonald's, your refusal to offer the McRib sandwich year round has left me with no other choice <laughs> than to wash down a fistful of Vicodin with a jumbo bottle of vodka from Costco. <laughs> Because you, sirs, have barbecue sauce as well as my blood on your hands. <laughs> and I'm loving it. Wow. And finally, dear ABC. But as I was watching the ID channel, this commercial came on, you know, and it goes, um, sometimes suicide is misplaced homicide. And then I was like, hey, that gives me a whole new idea. Of what the hell here? Dear ABC, when you ask me once again to come back and bail out your shit low rated network, <laughs> I did so with the same sass and vigor that I've always delivered. And I gave you the highest ratings you've seen in 10 years, unfortunately. No, Lucky Veruca, Rob Schneider might be, might have to be. be on the next one. We, we did it watch some Rob right Schneider on the last stream, but it was painful. And painful. throw me under every bus that you could find. Well, guess what? I'm not the one that's dead, bitches. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my final message of the evening. Don't wait till it's too late to tell the people you love how you really feel about them. <laughs> I think, I think that's, that's the message I really want to give to you all. Tonight, go home.
tell those you love to fuck off right now. Thank you for coming. Okay, well, that was, um... Fuck, man, that was, um... I don't even know. That was... That left me, like... St I, I, knew, I knew it would be bad. Like, I knew it would be bad, but I expected it to be a lot more... It was very boomer. I expected it to be more boomer, less public therapy session, I think. Um, and that threw me for a loop because I... I didn't expect some of that, if I'm being honest. Like, I I think... Uh, Jitters XP really quick. 90 bits. I only just read the Tyler show. Can we confiscate canceled from conservatives? They clearly don't use it responsibly. It... It's so... Like, it, it was so personally dark, is the thing. It was such a visceral look into her own psyche... And it only reaffirms my view, especially for Roseanne, that she is somebody who, like Kanye, needs very real help. Needs very real people to sit down and care for her and say, hey, what you're doing is not fucking okay. Here's why. Here's how I want to help you. And I think she doesn't have anybody like that in her life, unfortunately. Um, or if she does, it seems like they have distanced themselves from her, which is very sad to see. Uh, as somebody who used to be a, used to be a, um, like quite an icon in comedy. How, how would I even rank these? How, how, like, all right, I think Isaac Butterfield was the best because he actually had good joke construction, even if I didn't like the content, and he actually had okay delivery. And his, his little bit bringing the girl up on stage and then hanging up on her dad is maybe actually my favorite joke of the night. That's something I would have done. I, I love the chaos of it. That's that's very fun to me. Number two? Like, what, what a murderer's row between Dave Rubin barely stringing a sentence together without sucking off, like, glazing the audience more than a Krispy Kreme between Owen Benjamin not being able to stop saying the N-word and between Roseanne's, like, psycho circus. Like, I don't... I don't even know, man. Like, I think Isaac Butterfield... Probably Dave... Like, he wasn't funny at all. He wasn't good. But he also didn't talk about sexual assault and say the N-word. So, I guess in this company, he's leading the pack in the top half. Um, and then probably Roseanne and I would put Owen last. Like, Owen, on a technical, on a purely technical level, Owen wasn't the worst speaker. He wasn't the worst comedian. He was pretty awful. But, like, he stole jokes. Like, blatantly stole jokes. He explained jokes. Like, he, he took breaks. Like, it, it was so... Yeah, I, I would agree with that. B. Parker on, on YouTube saying, Butterfield, Ruben, and a tie between Owen and Barr. Like, I, I feel like that's pretty... Um, pretty fair to, uh, to assess. Hi there, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please would you leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Since I do this, all of this, whatever this video is, as a full-time job, I need all the support I can get as it helps me continue not just my production, but my output overall. If you would like to help me and get sneak peeks at my content before it goes up, please check out my Patreon, which should be linked down below. And also be sure to check out Twitch, where we do all sorts of fun things like play video games and dive deep into the hellish depths of the most obscure and dark political corners of the internet. As always, I want to thank everybody for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.